We're back. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to the Underground Broadcast. And I gotta tell you motherfuckers, I should be given some kind of fucking gold medal for what I just achieved. Because this just happened in less than 10 minutes. I'm not even playing. I just literally got fucking home. And I was worried I wasn't gonna make it in time. And all of this... Got ready in 10 fucking minutes. Suck a dick, women. I do it better than your motherfuckers. Yeah! Cheers! <laughs> Cheers, you motherfuckers. I think I saw Gomer Kyle here first. Here's your Gomer Kyle, motherfuckers. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds. To wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! Cheers, Gober! I saw Anthony Timmons here too! Fucking Timmons, I don't have one for you, but I'm gonna give you the Wolfpack for life, and I promise if I ever get a bigger fucking system, you're getting an intro! Wolfpack. <laughs> Ah, oh, yeah, Timmons. And none other than Super Saiyan Joku is also here, you motherfucker. Meow. I want to have the world. The world's most comfortable uh, pair of ultra soft. Uh, 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 And tonight, this wonderful show is not being sponsored by Buzzball Chillers. Aw, yeah. Made by women for women or men who identify as women. Aw, oh, yeah. Tonight, we're drinking sour apple, motherfuckers. You see that? Nothing splashes. No, no shit hitting your face, ruining your makeup. This is the smartest invention a woman ever made. I gotta tell you, check. Oh yeah. Uh, let's get this show on the road, motherfuckers, man. Uh, I'm still catching my breath because y'all don't. I'm not playing when I said I fucking took a shower and fucking and got ready in ten minutes, man. Holy shit. Should get an award for that. Nobody can fucking do that. I bet you motherfuckers will panic. And I still made it on time. Maybe one minute, one minute for a few seconds, but I still made it on time. Motherfuckers, I'm ready. I'm ready for the big time, boys. Aw, oh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, remember to sign up for our extra channels because we're one, one strike away from getting deleted off of YouTube. So we have extra channels down here. Look them up and then, you know, download them and all that ass or sign up and all that shit. I don't know what they say. I'm not good at that ass. And that's probably why we don't have more than 600 subscribers. But what are you going to do? We're having fun here. We don't give a fuck if we get famous. Anyways, on August the 25th, that is next Sunday for you dumb sons of bitches. We're going to be watching All In London on our Discord. And it's going to be fucking badass. So make sure you fucking sign up for a discord. There'll be a fucking video probably on Saturday or on Sunday of that week uh, With the link to the fucking discord. Uh, we'll be chilling. You know what it is motherfuckers uh, So yeah, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, uh, Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland. It's gonna be badass I got a feeling that fucking Mark Tony Khan is going to put the title on Danielson so he can retire as AEW World Champion. Which is a very, very nice gesture, if you ask me. Because Vince McMahon and WWE would never do that for somebody leaving or, or, or retiring or just possibly leaving the company. They would never do that shit. That's why Bret Hart got screwed. Uh, but I got a feeling Tony Khan is going to do right by this man and is going to make him happy. He's going to be AEW Champion going out on top. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Street Team Tony says, be careful in the shower. Don't end up like Richard Simmons. Oh, fuck. No. I'm not going to lie to you. Street Team Tony, thank you for being here. Cheers, by the way. <laughs> um, I fell. Or almost fell a very long time ago. I, I fell. I slipped. 
and I fucking, my feet went up and shit. But I manage most showers nowadays, thank God, at least in these apartments, they have that bar on the side because some people are old. So when I flew up like that and shit from slipping, I fucking grabbed the bar. And uh, I, I mean, I did get hurt because, you know, oh shit, but I didn't fall, you know, because I was able to hold on to something. And uh, when I went and I went and bought those rubber shit and I put it all over like because I you can buy one and it doesn't fit the whole shower. It's just a little area. Motherfucker, I bought enough that the whole floor of the shower is full of that rubber shit. I ain't falling in there. Uh uh. Not at all. Don't worry, street team. One time it happened to me. Never again. Never again. Uh, probably, uh was Richard Simmons was a dumbass. And uh, and he got he needed to fucking uh, you know, get some kind of assistance. You really was leave him alone. He was mentally disabled. Thank you for subscribing, motherfucker. We love you in this channel. Officially. Street team Tony. Cheers. And let us know how we can become members of your street team. We're all about gangs in here. You know what I'm saying? We're all about the woke pack here. Woke pack. Oh, 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 live. Oh, yeah. It's a bunch of motherfuckers that wear makeup and, and like to wear women's lingerie and shit like that. Smoke weed and drink. and Don't give a fuck about nothing. Uh, yeah. Cheers, Tony. We love you. Thank you for subscribing. Ah, anyways. Let's get this show on the road, y'all, because we got a lot of shit to, com to talk, talk about, and you all motherfuckers left a lot of comments, all right? If somehow this ever pops up, and, and we get like a gazillion fucking, you know, uh, millions of fucking uh, uh, comments, we're only going to read comments for 45 minutes, all right? Because I'm going to get tired. I'm not even good at reading and shit. Anyways, let's move on. To the motherfucking social medias comments and shit. Remember our social medias is Son of Man665 at the X. Elon Musk, you know what that is all about. And uh, don't worry, Gomer. You know, by 2030, we're all gonna be doing it. Don't worry. It's okay. Uh, on Instagram, it's at the under little line uh, underground under little line of broadcast. And on TikTok, we no longer upload to TikTok. You can go and there is a fucking TikTok channel. And there's a bunch of videos. But if you look, we usually have 400, 600 views on each video. And then all of a sudden, we get like one or two views because they shadow banned us. And because of that, we're protesting and we're never, never going to upload to that fucking Chinese communist fucking uh, uh, platform again. Fuck you. That's the only thing I agree with Joe Biden. When you get the fuck... Get the fucking TikToks the fuck out of here. Back to their fucking country of China. You communist sons of bitches. How dare you censor me. Me. Out of all people. This is the person that should be like not, not censored nowadays. And allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. But not the Chinese. You fucking guys. Anyways. Uh, whatever you're sending me to your social medias. As long as you do it before the broadcast. Don't fucking send me something five minutes before, an hour before, with technical difficulties, aka Super Saiyan Joku. And expect me to get it all ready and shit. Luckily, this motherfucker meows and purrs at me, and I love that shit. So I, I got it ready before I jumped in the shower. You, you know what? That's probably why I was late. And I had to do it all over you because Super Saiyan Joku's fault. They should blame it on him. <laughs> But anyways, he sent me this shit on uh, Instagram, and he says, Hey, son of man, at the underground broadcast, this might look like shake, but it's ready to bake. Either way, I'm blazing all this to face. Oh, yeah, cheers, muff flowers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag roll up. Hashtag light up. Hashtag smoke up. Hashtag marijuana. Hashtag Mary Jane. Hashtag smoke weed every day. Aw, oh, yeah. Uh, let's see what he got. He got some something from the Bud Barn. And uh, let me pause it there, motherfucker, because I got to read what that shit says. I'm already bad at all this. Green Mountain Grind Pineapple Haze. Hey, does it fucking taste or smell like pineapple? Tell me. Um, I don't know, slowed, cured, a bunch of fucking shit, 14 grams. You got 14 grams for it looks like about $52. That's fucking badass. 
I think I got 14 grams for 75. And that's not from the store. Like, you're, you're privileged ass. I had to go over here from the brown motherfuckers down the street. And I know that son of a bitch ripped me off. But it's okay. I got some weed, motherfuckers. That's all I really care about. Ah, <sighs> I hate my state. I don't know why they don't fucking woken the fuck up and legalize it. Everyone would be happier, and there wouldn't be any of these fucking road rages incidents that we had. You know, what was it, a few days ago, there was a road rage, and two cars flipped over, and two toddlers flew out of the car. And there's video on the internet. You search it, Texas, and shit. Uh, I think it was near Houston or somewhere like that. I don't even know. It was down here in the highway and shit. Uh, but there was two toddlers in diapers, no clothes on, walking in the middle of a highway where cars were going 60 miles an hour. All the cars were fucking freaking out until one of them fucking finally pulled over because everybody was freaking out, swerving the fuck out of the way. And then finally somebody pulled over and fucking grabbed those kids. And there's two cars flipped over. The drivers are probably in there. I don't know, man. It was fucked up, man. Um, I gotta say, man, I'm really jealous because I would have loved if uh, the weed I bought, you know, would have been already cut like that and and ready to roll here i am with all these all these fucking nugs there's another little jar i have over there but i have all these nugs and i and my grinders always stop working after a few fucking uses they fucking get stuck or they don't turn anymore and then i'm there with my hands like a caveman trying to get it to look like this so i can roll it up god damn it I'm going to write to my congressmen and my state representatives. What the fuck is taking so long? The yuppies over there in California have it good. And they're not even good people. They're idiots. God damn it. But our good Americans over here in Texas, we need some of this shit. That's all I'm saying. I'm tired of breaking the law to feel good. Can I just go to the store to feel good? God damn it. Cheers, Super Saiyan Joku. Thank you for that, motherfucker. I'm real jealous. Uh... Let me know if it does uh, taste like uh, like fucking uh, pineapple. I'm curious. I've never had any of this fancy shit. I get the shit from the from the motherfuckers down here in the street. You know, I don't know what it is. It's just weed. That's all I say. Ah. Anyways, thank you for sending me that. Whatever you send me, I'll show here. But let's get started with the comments, and we're gonna start on the comments video that I posted last Sunday. From Deep Post. Because <laughs> uh, I answered, oh, I read his comments and I answered whatever he asked me. And he just put a laughing shit. Uh, uh, Street Team says, you guys in Cali should definitely try Orange Crimsicle. Oh, this motherfuckers. You see what I'm talking about? Y'all motherfuckers are fucking privileged, motherfuckers. Orange Crimsicle? That sounds delicious. Fuck. Here I am with this fucking... I don't know what this is called. This is called fucking Pedro's Wheat from down the street and shit. Probably came out of his dog's ass when he sn snuck it over across the border. And shit. Fuck you, Joe Biden. You know, if there was a wall, bullshit like that would have been coming across and it would have forced the state to make it legal. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. If there was a wall, the wheat would have come over and they would be forced to legalize it. So everyone would be happy. All right? Everything works out to say ah oh, talking about wrestling y'all motherfuckers i didn't see it i you know what god damn it i feel bad timmins this was the first week i didn't watch raw and i actually forgot to watch dynamite aew and the reason why i forgot to i didn't watch raw because i was busy doing some shit uh but i didn't watch fucking uh aew dynamite because i I forgot it was Wednesday. I thought I was Tuesday. And I realized, because I'm a, you know me, uh, son of man or whatever, uh, but, you know, so that I can know where, where I am, because every day's the same, except for Fridays. I know Friday's a Friday, uh, but every day's the same, but I use a calendar, and I marked a calendar, you know? And I forgot to mark Tuesday off. So when I woke up the next day, I thought it was Tuesday. And I went the whole day thinking it was Tuesday. And the next day when I woke up, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's Wednesday. And I turn on the YouTube. There's all these videos about what happened on, on, on Dynamite. And I was all like, wait, they showed Dynamite on Tuesday? What happened? And then I realized that it wasn't Tuesday. I was like, fuck. You know what I'm saying? 
This is what the weed down the street does to you. We had to weed like Joe Koo and motherfucking Street Team Tony from California have. I wouldn't be having those kinds of problems forgetting what fucking day I am. God damn it. Anyways, let's keep going. There's a lot of comments. Oh, it's none other than no, ma'am. Let me hit it for this fucking uh, misogynist uh, fucking uh, woman abuser. Where are you? No, ma'am. National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. And uh, this asshole says, Yo, Kanye. Oh, yeah, I'm the Kanye. It's new uh, habit. Whippets. He says, Kanye be on that hippie crack. No wonder he act like that. But your face is laughing. Cheers to the man. P.S. P.S. What does P.S. stand for? I never knew. Uh, pussy? Sex? Or something? I don't know. Anyways, P.S. Stay away from whippets. Hashtag. I can honestly tell you I only did whippets one time. One time in my life. I was 18 years old. And I was rooming. Literally. We lived in bunk beds in the same room. Me and he who should not be named. Alright. I don't like telling this story because I hate that son of a bitch. Uh, but we went to the fucking the Planet K. And we bought fucking two boxes of whippets. Uh, because our neighbor sold me a crack. That's what he called it. It wasn't actually crack. It was a little canister. And the canister... You know, opens up. It's kind of like this. But super big and long. And you twist it open. And it opens up, you know. And it's hollow inside. And uh, you put the whippet canister in there. It's big enough to fit a whippet canister in there. And on this end, it had a little spike. So you would put it like this. And when you would tighten it, it pops open the whippet canister. And then you would put a balloon on one end like that and when you would twist it open all the air would go into the balloon fucking badass my neighbor gave us that and so i was like all right so we went and got two boxes of that we spent all afternoon <laughs> we went through those two boxes bro oh my god uh i can honestly tell you i have never in my life Felt brain dead with any drug. Because I've done a lot of drugs, believe me. You don't end up looking like this by doing marijuana, okay? Uh, so, yeah, uh, I have never felt brain dead with, a lot, with any of the drugs I did un un until I did whippets. Holy shit. I felt dumb as fuck the next day. And, uh, and I never did it again, and, and, and he who should not be named never did it again either, because he was fucking, he was all like, my head hurts. And I was like, yeah, my, 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 I feel dumb. <laughs> I told him, I kind of feel dumb. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hey, thank you, Street Team Tony. I appreciate that. Uh, but unfortunately, YouTube is a bunch of motherfuckers, and uh, we get banned, and copyright strikes, and we don't even have 600 subscribers because we don't even come out in people's feeds and shit. So it's an uphill battle. It's an uphill battle. But no worries. No worries. You know, we don't, we don't quit. And we don't raise quitters. There was a quitter who quit this channel. But we don't mention his name anymore. He who should not be named. You pussy. We're keeping this going. We're a broadcast. Cheers, y'all. And remember, it's always... Oh, yeah. All right, let's see who else. Oh, Anthony Timmons and the Grace Randolph Strikes Again video. That was a really controversial video, by the way. He says, Grace Randolph couldn't find her own ass in the dark if she used both hands. Bitch is completely clueless. Or absolutely right, Timmons. She couldn't find an ass because she doesn't have one. She's got these big ass double D titties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's where everything went. Her fucking titties. She don't got no ass and she got no brain because she's a dumbass. Everything she says is a fucking dumbass because, you know, that's where all the fucking good stuff is. Oh yeah. I got to tell you, man. I, she's hot. I ain't going to lie. 
Uh, but I'm more of an ass man myself, I ain't gonna lie. And I like a big girl, you know? None of these bony chicks, I'm gonna be honest with you. And another thing, she can't look prettier than I do in makeup. If not, she's out of there. Alright, that's all I'm gonna say. Cheers, Anthony Timmons. Thank you for commenting, motherfucker. And remember... Live. <sighs> Brought to you in part by Buzzball Chillers. Made by women for men who dress like women. All right, let's keep going. Anthony Timmons also says on the Zac Efron almost died video. Hey, Zach, never dive into the shallow end of the pool. You're going to break something. It's called situational awareness. Dumbass. Uh, I don't know what situational awareness is. Yeah, man. You know, I, I, I thought about it a lot, you know. Cause I was giving him a hard time and I really like the guy. He's really good looking, you know what I'm saying? You know, he is he is a good looking man. Even with that fucked up new chin that he has. He looks like a fucking Chad. He's ripped as fuck and he's hot. Um but you know, I was thinking about it and you know, there must have been some really, really hot ass bitches that he neglected, you know, like you said, to be aware of where he jumped off of. And I think I'll give him a break for that because he was in Ibiza. And I gotta tell you, a fucking a two in Ibiza is a fucking 15 over here. I'm just saying. So it didn't matter. There could have been the ugliest girl in the whole fucking country right there. She's still super hot to him. And he got confused and he jumped off the four feet. So you know what? At least he was trying to get some pussies, what I say. Yeah. Cheers, Timmons. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm light up for you. Don't drink so much water. I'm not taking a break anytime soon, motherfucker. Talking to my dog. He's over there drinking up like he's fucking hasn't drank in weeks. Anyways. Uh. Oh. Laura Cola. On the James Gunn's DC mess. That's an old video, too. Well, I mean, it might be. I don't know. We're always talking shit about James Gunn. You'll find out. I don't think we talk about him today. There was an ass for him. Anyways, they, because I don't know if this is a female or a man, who knows nowadays, they say, then you're not a DC fan. Oh, I am. And that's why I'm angry every time I see this piece of shit in the ass he's making. Because if you weren't a fan, you wouldn't be pissed. You'd be like, this is awesome. The fuck you. They're ruining it. They never give Snyder a chance. That's all I'm saying. They never gave him a chance. He had a vision. None of the movies got made the way he wanted to. He was like the, the Kevin Feige they didn't have faith in over there. Then his daughter committed suicide and they say, fuck that guy. Fucking Warner Brothers is a piece of shit. That's why they lost all the, the, fucking, the, the fucking money they did. And Ezra Miller is a fucking a, a child abductor. And a criminal. Anyways. Cheers to you, Lauda. Thank you for commenting. <laughs> That was for you. Timmons on the Leonardo's Ibiza vacation. Everybody, everybody is is over there in Ibiza. You know, they were, they were having fun because uh, I don't know where it was. Maybe that's where the Olympics were. I don't know. It was over there in the same countries, I guess, in the same vicinity. So everybody was over there being a bunch of pussies. Anyways, Timmons says, the jellyfish. Oh, yeah, because he got stung by a jellyfish. The jellyfish must have recognized him and he probably just wanted an autograph. Yeah, he just wanted to fucking suck on that ass. Got him right on the right cheek, too. Oh, yeah. If I was a jellyfish and I saw Leonardo DiCaprio in the water, I would go straight for his asshole, for sure. I bet you that's exactly what that fucking jellyfish was doing, but he missed. And that's why he only got the right cheek. He almost he almost had it. He almost had it. Would have been tasty, too. Oh, yeah. Cheers! <laughs> All right, all right, let's see. Dan Harmon. Oh, my God. James Gunn is a legend PDF. Him and Dan Harmon, a legend. Dan Harmon, isn't that the guy who, who worked for that other crazy asshole, Rick and Morty and shit? <laughs> yeah, 
Well, some shit show that was. It started off good, and then on, and then it became popular, and it turned all mainstream. I fucking hate it. Anyways. Jess Rivers and the Kanye's new habit says, Anyone can clearly see the sick man is on drugs. A sick, demented person such as this isn't born, but rather made through years of heavy narcotic use. Are you talking about Kanye or me? Son of a bitch. Hey, you know what, Jess Rivers? You fucking always leave comments like this that you're never specific whether you're talking about me or the motherfucker in the video. Son of a bitch. I like that. Cheers! This guy... This guy's a troll. I think it's a guy. Jess. Could be Jesse. Or Jessica. Oh! Either way, this motherfucker's a troll. And I respect motherfucker trolls around here. Cheers! No, Joku. Fucking the cunt says that he has the bell notification on and he says sometimes he doesn't get notifications. So believe me when I say YouTube doesn't like me because I'm brown and I dress like a woman. You fucking racist. They're the worst combination of racism you could ever do. You fucking dicks. But they hate on me. They hate on this channel. They hate on us. They don't respect us. They don't respect nothing that we do. Fuck you, Google. Fuck you, YouTube. Fuck you. Give me a strike for that, pussies. In case you didn't know, we're one strike away from being deleted from YouTube. God damn it. The channel that has 600 subscribers is about to get deleted. God damn it. Do you, need, you have Melanie Mack over there doing all her hate speech. Fucking Logan Paul showing dead people in Japan and shit. And they fucking don't even get strikes. Fuck you, YouTube. Anyways. Uh, J Hart W. Oh, fuck. All right, I, I've had a long day. I don't, I don't even have this ready. But I'll click on it for the sake of you all. Uh, you won't be see the, you'll hear the audio. You might see a little bit of the video, but you'll hear the audio at least. Let's hear what this son of a bitch wants you to hear. Because he puts a bunch of, he puts son of man out of context. And he puts cheers, bro. I'm sorry, all right? I'm a one-man show. Usually I have this stuff ready. It's been a hell of a week, all right? The weather's been shitty. Anyways, let me click on this. Doesn't give a fuck if you try to get one of them Munjabian names. You are not African, motherfucker. Just because your white fucking parents were fucking living over there when you they gave birth to you doesn't make you African, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, that's definitely me out of context. Uh, if you want to know what the fuck I meant, you need to go watch the video. <laughs> Cheers, J Hart W, you asshole. I'm sorry I don't have that ready. Usually I have the clip ready. Ugh. I think my bandana's on too tight. My brain is starting to hurt. Uh, anyways, let me drink some more. That'll make it fucking numb. Zach, oh uh, no, D post on the Zach Efron video. He puts Zach Efron was pushing his limits while prepping for Baywatch 2. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That's funny, bro. Hey, you know what? Him being in Baywatch and all that shit, you'd think he would have known better diving off the shallow end of the pool. A dumbass. Some lifeguard you were. The Rock would be very disappointed in your fucking good-looking ass. You squared chin motherfucker. Cheers. To D-Post. And cheers to Jack Efron. Fuck it. He's good-looking. Gomer Kyle on the Son of Man Isis full album that I put up. 2015, by the way. So, 2015, that was recorded and, 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 and released. I think I have one more album to put up, and then that's the end. Uh, one more next week, and then all my music's up there for y'all. Uh, we'll talk about that. Somebody left some comments, so I'll, I'll talk more about it later. But anyways, Gomer says, You're the Mexican Seamus, always having banga at the banga. I, don't, I can't do it like Seamus. Banga at the banga. 
Cheers! Hashtag Wolfpack for live. Hashtag live. Thank you, Gomer. I appreciate that, motherfucker. Uh, like I said, I, 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 I don't do music anymore. This is what I do. Uh, every once in a while, if I actually have free time, I'll sit here and I'll make a beat or two. Or I'll get my guitar and I'll, you know, uh, I was thinking that if I ever, you know, I'm am, am doing something cool or uh, worthwhile, I might just record myself working on stuff or whatever, and then I'll post it. Uh, not, not that I'm making a new album, but just so you can see what my, my process is like, as how I do it or how I did it basically uh but yeah there's one more album uh left next week on monday you'll probably get it i'll put it up and then uh, that'll be all 14 of my <laughs> of my albums uh anyways it's old music i don't i don't even think i like you know those you know uh, i you know i always found poetry not poetry but just like some they taught us at school you know you keep a little book and you write shit down you know the motherfuckers called it a diary and they called me uh, you know a baggot for it uh but i didn't care you know i always wrote stuff down if they're like this son of a bitch pissed me off fuck that guy and i'm writing shit down you know you know, whatever the fuck and, uh, you know, some of these things were just feelings, you know, and shit like that. And, and I always try to make concepts and stuff. So when I did something like this one, you know, it, uh, ISIS was more about fucking, um, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah, you gotta go and listen to them. You kind of get an idea. Uh, so things are paired and grouped together and, and, you know, I don't know. They're just thoughts and emotions from back in the day. That's all I can say. Yeah. Anyways. I don't know if I feel anything nowadays. I really don't. What am I gonna fucking rap or sing about? James Gunn? Fuck that guy. Son of a bitch. Anyways. Next comment. Oh, Rocco, fuck my life. This Satanist. Let me hit it for him. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Rocco. Rocco on the Craven. It's gonna bring out Craven the Hunter. The movie is gonna bring out all the weirdos. He puts a bunch of laughing faces and says, "A great way to start the day, laughing at your video, son of man." Hashtag. Live. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Rocco. I'm glad. You know that's why I posted at seven in the morning these videos because I'm like, people wake up to go to work. Most people work at eight or nine. You know, whatever the fuck. They, I don't think anybody goes in that early, except for me. I'm, I'm awake at 5.30 a.m. every day. Uh, but anyways, it's my dog needs to piss and shoot. Uh, but, you know, you know, I, I figured I post the videos early, and that way people can, you know, watch it while they're brushing their teeth or eating or whatever the fuck, or maybe even driving, you know, whatever. Right before you go to work, here's my thoughts, my opinions for you. So I posted that early. Anthony Timmons and the Craven gets a R rated R or whatever. He says, Craven was a good character. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. I'm not sure what to think about this shit. This doesn't sound like the Craven I grew up reading about. Crap. <sighs> We're going to talk about this tonight because if you all know this week, they actually premiered the trailer. Kind of fucked up. Because the video I posted, it didn't come out till Thursday, so it was irrelevant because the trailer already came out. And I'm fucking stupid ass. Oh. Fuck you. We only do the show once a week. And the short, the short videos during the week is just excerpts from the fucking from the show we're doing tonight. Thank you, Timmons, for that little bit of insight. Yes, they're ruining Cravey, but I'm gonna talk about it later on tonight. He also says, Steve Ditko is rolling over in his grave. This is going to be hot garbage. Well, it's not just Steve Ditko, but his whole estate and his children because they're pissed. They want the rights and the money for Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. Um, but Marvel took them to court and I think they lost, which sucks. Because uh, a lot of these guys, and you know what? It's their fault. It's their fucking fault. I'm not playing. 
When you work in a company, I've signed a lot of these, and I'm sure you have too. Don't be idiots. They give you these big fucking pamphlets and shits to fucking sign. And most of the times, most of us just want to start working and want to get the job already. And so we just skip to where the thing and we sign everything. We sign everything. Boom, here's the, the fucking booklet. Man, I promise you, if you work for a big company, there is a section in there. Because I, at one time, I, I was bored. And I didn't think they were going to give me the job. Or I thought that maybe, like, I'm like, oh, they said I'm hired, but... They haven't gotten the drug test results back. And I'm like, hey, how the fuck I'm hired? The minute they get those retests, they're going to fire me. And I'm like, man, fuck these guys. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to play with them or whatever. They're playing with me. I'm going to play with them. They think they're playing with me. I'm going to play with you, motherfuckers. I'm going to take long signing these papers. And I started reading it. <laughs> I didn't get the job, by the way, because the drug test did come back. But I felt they were fucking with me. Because how are you going to give somebody the job before the drug test comes? And you look like this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so anyways, I was like, yeah, they're fucking with me. They're wasting my time. I could be looking for another job right now, but they want to be dicks. I'm going to be dicks too. I'm going to take forever signing these papers. I read every page. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I read every page and one of those pages said that anything you create or if you make an invention or you come up with a system that, you know, something that the company, it benefits. That you don't own it. Or that idea that came from you. You don't own it. And it's the company's. And you sign it. You sign it. And I am telling you the way the comic book industry works is that you work for Marvel Comics. Your job, it is your actual job that you're actually getting paid for, is to create new characters for us and stories. So, that you're already getting paid for it, that you're getting paid shit for it, is your fault. And that's what people like Todd McFarlane and um, like Jim Lee and uh, what's the Deadpool, Rob Liefeld, and a bunch of those motherfuckers realize that once they had professional jobs. They realize that we're getting paid shit and we're the real geniuses. And they left to start Image Comics. And they started something that ended up nowhere because there were a bunch of stoners who couldn't get the job done. That's why Image Comic failed. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. What did I do here? That's why Image Comic failed is because these dumb sons of bitches were lazy. And instead of releasing a comic book every month, like an issue every month, they would take several months before the next issue would come out and people would get mad and shit. And that's why it failed. Uh, idiots. But they had something going where they said... We're going to make our own shit. You know, we're going to keep all the money. Because we're the geniuses. Not you. You you, you need us to make Spider-Man good. Man, every Todd McFarlane arc of Spider-Man was amazing. We wouldn't have Venom if it wasn't for Todd McFarlane. We wouldn't have Deadpool. If it wasn't for Jim Lee. We wouldn't have Doctor Strange. We wouldn't have fucking, oh my god. You know, and then the one guy who didn't get no credit for none of this, a lot of this shit, is, uh, uh, oh my god. And he's the one that uh, they secretly say is the one above all in the comic books, the, the god of Marvel comic books, the one above all, is, um, god, I'm gonna fucking hate myself because I'm high and drunk. Somebody help me out. It's not Stan Lee. It's the other motherfucker. God, I'm gonna really hate myself. Ah, oh, you sons of bitches. I'm going to have to fucking Google this shit real quick. Oh, I, it's right at the top of my tongue and I can't even remember. Jack Kirby. God damn it. Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby is the real genius behind fucking all our heroes that we fucking, you know, uh, listen to and shit. Oh, Nighthawk. Oh my god, Nighthawk is so crazy and badass, bro. Um, Jack Kirby. Yeah. He is the one guy who gets no respect and no credit. Stan Lee wrote the stories. Stories. They're great stories. Origins and shit. But the actual designs and the characters all came from one man who to this day, I feel, gets no respect and no recognition. And that's Jack Kirby. And that's a damn shame, man. Because he, he's the one who said this is the way he's going to look. 
And these are the powers he's going to have. And Stan Lee's job was to, to come up with a story for whatever this asshole was drawing. Um, it was a team effort. It was. It, you, you, it was. There were two halves of the whole. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's why when Jack Kirby left because he wasn't getting the respect and Stan Lee was getting all the respect, he left, went to D.C. You started seeing the parallels where I was like, well, Thanos, the dark side is just another Thanos. And this is just another this. And this is just because it's the same guy making the characters, but he's making a different one for the other company. You know, and a lot of people don't know that. And I think that's real super disrespectful of Kevin Feige, Marvel, and Disney that they don't even bother. They put Stan Lee's fucking pervert ass face on and, and CGI him on every fucking film, but they can't put not even Jack Kirby's name. I, I'm, I'm lying. I think they do put Jack Kirby. Characters by Jack Kirby they put in white letters that nobody, nobody sits around to see any of that shit anymore um but yeah anyways i don't i went too long with this i'm sorry let's keep going because there's more comments god damn it anthony timmons also says steve ditko is rolling over and oh uh, that's the one i read already steve ditko is rolling over his grave they fucked up spider-man the mcu spider-man design is based on ditko just in case you didn't know kevin F uh timmons also says Kevin, Fe Kevin Feige is going to star in his own Marvel movie one day. A new character called Captain Flaccid, the human ball sack. <laughs> That's funny, bro. Uh, Jim Valentine. Oh, yeah, yeah. The new gods. And what did you say, Anthony Timmons? Come on, come on, D come on, though. Wildcats was badass. Wildcats is fucking sick. There was another independent company that quickly tanked. It was called Chaos Chaos Comics. I don't know if you guys remember. Those were in the 90s. I have uh, Purgatory. <sighs> I have Purgatory comic books. And I there's my favorite. My favorite fucking comic books and character and it pissed me off that the com company went to shit because it didn't even last not, not even not even a year i don't even think like they, there wasn't even that many issues but man that comic book i don't know if you know what purgatory is but the comic book is about a female lesbian egyptian vampire goddess who was resurrected in modern days and she has sex with men, women, and she's fighting these Egyptian gods from the past. It's crazy. It's fucking badass. She's a vampire, and she's super sexy and, and, and sexy Egyptian god-like woman. You know, she having sex with women, and with her lesbian lovers. But then when she transforms, when uses her powers, she turns all red, and grows horns and like a devil with wings. And she's a fucking vampire. It's so badass. Purgatory is sick. I loved it. There was also the Max. Uh, Pit, Evil Eddie, I think was one of them too. Pit, Pit, Pit was, uh, Pit was so fucking sick. I have a few comic books. I have actually, I have the one crossover Marvel comics actually did that was good. Pit versus Hulk. Oh, that is one of the. Go buy it. You could probably find it on eBay. I don't think it's that expensive because people don't even know what Pit is. So I know it's not that. You'll probably find it for 20, 20, 30 bucks. But trust me, it's worth it. And it's super thick. It's just one issue. And it's Pitt versus Hulk. Ah. The best comic book I own. And I own a lot of old comic books. I'm talking about even from the 60s. I've gone hunting and I have found old comic books. I have number one issues of shit. That I'm not even going to say. Because I don't want to get broken into in here. Uh, but. Pit vs. Hulk is fucking my favorite comic book that I have. It's good. The Last Battle on Earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like Vampirella. Oh, yeah, she's a little bit like Vampirella, but she's an, an Egyptian god or vampire. She's Egyptian, and she fights Egyptian gods. The story never finished, and you know, because it never they got canceled. It sucks ass. Sexy comic book, though. I love it. Timmons says Marcus Jordan on the Marcus Jordans uh, gives into peer pressure video. Timmons says, has he be taking lessons from Billy Ray Cyrus? These guys never seem to learn. 
These young girls only see them as an ATM with legs. Timmons, you're not lying. When you're rich and famous, or at least a very fucking attractive big dick. Nipple, baby. Like this dumbass Marcus Jordan. Of course women are going to use you. Just like they use any fucking man. You know, if you're smart like me, and you've never had money, the moment you have money, you use women. You make them pretend, yeah, we're gonna go to Ibiza tomorrow. Don't worry, bitch, come over, let's have sex and shit. Oh, yeah, 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 you get her high, you fuck the shit out of her, you get her really drunk, so she passes out, and then you fucking leave the fucking hotel room. You leave her with the bill, and she'll never see her again. Oh, yeah, you go you take go to Ibiza, and you fuck some other bitches over there. Cheers! That's how you do it, motherfuckers. Don't be an idiot. All right, do it like that. Um, Gomer Kyle on the Cravens already R says the R means re tard cares. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'll talk more about this later on tonight. I don't want to jump into the subjects right now, but it was my fault. I didn't know they were going to release a trailer that came out of nowhere. I thought Sony had given up. I thought they were going to say the movie was canceled after Deadpool. They're like, no way we're going to make money now. Now they're really trying hard. Put all the CGI blood. Uh, we'll get into it later on tonight. Sorry. Culture War. Oh, this is uh, canceled for life. The motherfuckers, y'all, your stupid at names piss me off. Uh, let me hit it for canceled. What do you call 100 black men buried in the ground up to their neck? What? Afro turf. So no. How do we know that Adam and Eve uh, weren't black? Oh. You ever tried to take a rib away from a black man? Okay. What? 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 Are, what are three <laughs> things that a black man can't get? A black guy, a fat lip, and a job. <laughs> I told you I'm gonna kick this boy. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Just got canceled. I wonder what they did. You racist. <laughs> R.I.P. Bernie Mac, we miss you. You were one of the best. You're a legend. I swear, you were one of my favorite black comedians, Bernie Mac. I love you. Fuck you, Ashton Kutcher. You racist. Cancel for Live says, The trailer looked dope, but it's Sony. And we all know the kind of trash they always put out. As Sun would say, Sony, you idiots. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Thank you. Uh, Cancel for life. I would say that. And I'm going to say that a lot tonight when we get to that subject. When we get to talking about that ass of a trailer. Um. Oh, there's a conversation these motherfuckers were having. I'm going to read your conversations. All right. I'm only reading the first comment. Y'all sons of bitches. Anyways. On the Nelly can't afford car insurance. Doug on fun. Hey, let me hit it for this smart son of a bitch. Woke as fuck. This guy is woke as fuck. He says, Son of man doing all the hits from the early 2000s. Cheers. Hashtag. Motherfucker, I can do hits from the 90s, from the 80s, from the 70s, and 60s. Once we start getting to the 50s and 40s, it's very, very few, very few from here and there sprinkled, you know. Uh, I might even not even know who's singing it, but I know the songs, you know. But yes, I am a jukebox. I think a little bit after the 2000s, I started getting really selective because even the pop music started sounding really lame and generic. And very like... Like there was no soul in it. God damn it. Britney Spears' soul was in her soulless music. You know, that's why it was a sexy voice and shit. Oh baby, baby. How was I supposed to know? That something wasn't right. That was all her energy and soul in it. You know, a lot of these new artists after the 2000s were just like soulless fucking. I'm just here because I'm a fucking record plant. 
<sighs> That's why I'm very selective after the 2000s. I'm very selective. But I'll, I'll, every, a lot of the music on the radio, everything before the 2000s, I, it's all in me, man. I was all in me, all right? I'm the best at karaoke. I get laid every night, every time I go to karaoke. Oh, yeah. Cheers! <laughs> all right, all right. Let's keep going. Anthony Timmons on the Nelly can't afford car insurance. He says, you know, it's getting bad when even rich people can't afford shit like car insurance. Sorry, Nell, but you're so stupid. Well, I mean, look, it is getting bad even for celebrities. All right. The economy is so bad. And you all notice if you've been keeping up the way with this channel, especially a lot of motherfuckers have been selling their houses over there in California and moving to Texas because the, the, the property taxes are still cheaper here in Texas. I still think it's ass that you got to pay pay a tax on something you own that you paid for already. You spent 20 years giving payments to the bank to own your house. And then after those 20 years, you got to pay the government a tax. And it ain't cheap, motherfuckers. It's thousands of dollars, you know? So if you're like one of these... Poor motherfuckers that for whatever strange reason finally spends 20, 30 years buying a fucking house so you can feel special for yourself. Then you're fucked because you're still going to pay a thousands of dollars of taxes just for having a little square of land that you already paid for. It's fucking bullshit. So it is hard for everyone. Cardi B has even said because Cardi B, Cardi B is a dumbass and she's from the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? She's like one of us, you know? Uh, she's not educated. So she's very lucky that the, the the people in the record company said, look, she's really stupid and her music is fucking dumb. If we make her famous, she will make everyone else dumb and stupid. And they'll vote for Kamala and Biden. So they made her famous. And so far, it's been working. Uh, she's really good, though. I fucking love her shit. Aw, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyways... She even went on Instagram or Twitters or shit, and she's been saying because she takes care of all her families. Her cousins, her aunts, her uncles, her grandma, her mom, her sisters, everybody. Because none of them had jobs. And she's the first person in the family who got a job. Just like the, you know, people, the first person to go to college has to take care of everybody. She's the first one to have a job. So she had to take care of her whole family. She's saying, God damn it, Mr. Biden. She's complaining. Mr. Biden, I voted for you. What's going on? It's costing me a lot of money to feed, to buy groceries and pay their rents and shit. I'm supposed to be rich and famous. What the fuck? So even, even celebrities are hurting, Timmons. Right? You gotta show some sympathy, you fucking guy. That's all I'm trying to say. Cheers, Timmons. Thank you for commenting. <sighs> Biden and the Democrats only won one thing. To keep everyone poor. That's how they stay rich. The way they stay rich is to make America like Mexico. I, for 18, 17 years of my life, I lived in a town that was literally one little walk across a bridge to Mexico. And believe me, the town I lived in might as well have been little Mexico. With some people speaking English. It was basically Mexico. With nicer things. Because it's America. But it was Mexico, bros. It was. And I'm fucking not lying uh, when I say this. Uh, we all suffer. We all go through the same shits as everyone else in this country. Alright? And people are not stupid. And they can see that these idiots, these idiots have somehow one way or another ruined the country the past four years everyone's suffering everyone's struggling these motherfuckers uh, something has to change and it's going to change people aren't stupid i don't know where i was going with this i'm really high and drunk we're gonna keep going on because it's not a political channel all right this is not what this is about fuck politicians oh shit is this the last comment let me check. 
It is the last comment, and it's not another than Houston, Texas, very own Jose Trevino. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Tienes envidia, puto. <laughs> Cheers, Treviño, you son of a bitch. And one of these days, Trevino, we gotta get together. I think you and me are the closest. Everyone else is in other states or countries. Uh, hey, by the way, Street Team Tony, uh, if you're in another country other than America, let us know. But if you're in America, at least tell us what state you're in. Uh, I, I, you know, so, we, so we can relate somehow. I think you said you were in California. I've, correct me if I'm wrong. But Trevino, you're right here. Right down the block, pretty much, motherfucker. We gotta get together, smoke out, or pick up some bitches and shit. You want know, some men? If that's what you're into, I don't have a problem with that. I'll pick up some men with you, motherfucker. I'll be the wingman. Oh, yeah. Anyways, Trevino says on the underground broadcast number 26. What up, son? Oh, wait. He, he left a long comment. Let me open it up right now. He says... What up, son? Damn, you're a triple threat. I know you say you don't have motivation, but a mega rapper. Oh, man, I appreciate that. I was really, I mean, that's, that's, that was my dream. I want to be, I want to be a, I want to be an artist, you know? I was even trying to, I had songs recorded, but I never put it out. Because I said, I'm going to do rap, but I'm going to do one fucking rock alternative album. And I have some songs that I never put out. And it's not rap. Uh, but I wanted to be an artist, you know, a musician and shit. But an artist means a lot of things nowadays. Uh, so I appreciate that that you're, you're giving me props. Thanks, thanks, bro. I put a lot of work into it. 14 fucking albums. Come on, bro. <laughs> I know people that were that got famous and they didn't even make that many mixtapes, you know. But anyways, it is what it is. We all, we got to roll with the with the cards that we're dealt. Fuck it. No looking back. Uh, he says, this election year is perfect to get that cash, you idiot. But really, it would be cool if you did one MAGA song. <laughs> Question, do you make your own beats? And what's up with Andrew Sanchez intro, LOL. Anyways, cheers. Whoa. Hashtag. World order. <laughs> I'm the only one I do that for, motherfucker. Um, a MAGA song. I just, uh, it's all a joke to me, bro. I just don't. I did, a, I did a whole political... It's already up there. Obamination. Obama Nation. Uh, that album is all political. And uh, I, that's, all, that's all I did. Uh, and every, there's, in every album, there's like one or two or three. There's one song at least in every album where I might touch on the subject. Uh, but it's not something that I'm all like... Especially nowadays. I don't know. Just everything's... Everything's so... We're all being duped, is all I'm going to say. Doesn't, get, doesn't matter who you vote for. We're all fucked in the end, brothers. This is, this is something that's just playing out before our eyes. That we have no control over. So I suggest, for most of you, if you plan to vote, go vote. And then get it out of your head and, and live your life, bro. Who cares what happens after you vote? Live your life. Because the people that care, they're the ones that are going to fuck everything up for the rest of us. Just you wait. Just you wait. Those people that care about who they're voting for, they really, really care. They're the ones that are going to make trouble for the rest of us that just want to live our lives. 
You can take that uh, any way you want. So now nah, I don't want to do a MAGA song. Whatever. Uh, he says, do you make your own beats? And what's up with Andrew Sanchez? Uh, yeah, I make my songs and shit. I mean, they, they, there's... If, if you actually, you can listen to it. I mean, if you don't want to, that's fine. But if you actually go and go to the link to, you want to download them and have them because it's up there for free, but whatever. If you go to that link, when you download them, you get the cover art. And I think on the back side of the CD, I used to actually print these out. I never sold any. I always thought it was stupid. That motherfuckers, you're eating a Chick-fil-A. Some motherfuckers, because I'm to you. Hey, sir, you want to buy my album? Hey, who the fuck are you? Do I even know what this sounds like? Get the fuck out of here! So I didn't understand why people did that. And I was never going to go do that. So I would actually give my CD away for free. Hey, do you like music? Do you like rap? Hey, here's my CD, man. Check it out. It's free. That's what I would do. And I don't understand why you're trying to fucking... You want people to listen to your music. Why are you trying to sell it, you idiot? You can sell it after you're famous. Uh, but anyways, maybe that's why it didn't work out for me. Because I was, I was not being greedy, I guess. I wasn't greedy enough. Uh, but I would get my albums for free, so I would print that shit out and give it out for free and shit. Uh, it didn't, like I said, whatever. It was another time. People weren't ready for the Son of Man. People are still not ready for the Son of Man. What up? What's up with Andrew Sanchez's intro? I'm going to play. I'm sure, I wonder if Andrew Sanchez will show up tonight, but I'm going to play his fucking intro just so that you can hear it and you can understand why he's so confused about it. Here's Andrew Sanchez's fucking intro. We don't test any of our products on animals. We use Filipino children. Hey! I try to tailor these intros to you all. That's why sometimes I ask you where you're from, what you'd like. And, you know, I'm, I'm sometimes I don't always read because I'm I'm doing a show in the comments. I read more right now when we're doing the comments. I'm reading more what you all are typing, but I don't always read when I'm doing the show in a little bit because I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. I'm entertaining y'all. Um, But I go back and I watch the video. And sometimes I see what you guys are talking about and I get ideas and then, you know, I, I try to come up and, and tailor these intros for you. Uh, Andrew Sanchez, if you don't know, this guy's from the Philippines. He's a half Mexican, half Filipino, and he lives in the Philippines. And whenever he wa if he shows up tonight, it's actually the morning over there. It's Saturday morning. If you're in America, it's Friday night. But over there, it's Saturday morning. Him and the cunt. Uh, Bradley Lewis is also from Australia. Um, but yeah, so there's he, when he shows up, he's from the Philippines. And when I said I was going to make him an intro, jokingly, I told him on here, I'm going to find the most racist shit I can find and make it into your intro. And he said, do it. So I put on YouTube the ra most racist fucking uh, uh, Filipino joke. And it was actually from a TV show on the Britain TV. And that's what that lady sa said. We don't test fucking our makeup on animals. We use Filipino children. Uh, and that was really controversial. And I think they got canceled for saying that. Uh, but I, cr I cropped that. And then I found a video of some little kid, in fi some Filipino kid, Cursing at the camera, angry. I don't know what he was saying. I know fucking two languages. I'm not a genius, but because I know two languages, I'm able to understand maximum four. I am. Because there's two other languages that are very similar, and even though I wouldn't be able to speak their language, I would at least understand what they're saying to me. And I would be able to say one or two words, and they might say, okay, he needs to go to the bathroom this way but everything else it would be nonsense because they wouldn't understand what i'm saying and neither would i but it's you know they some words are sound the same and what i told them when i made this is i don't know what that kid was saying but it sounded to me like he was saying your mother is a whore <laughs> and andrew sanchez is like 
There is a phrase in there where he does say that. He says a bunch of stuff about somebody's mother, but he basically is saying your mother's a whore. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why, uh, that's what's up with Andrew Sanchez's fucking intro. Uh, it's just something I did, and he loved it. He loves it. Uh, I tried to, we tried to tailor. Back in the day, he who should not be named was in charge of some of y'all's intros at the beginning. He started getting lazy, so I took over. I don't want to get into that. Anyways, we're done with the goddamn comments, finally. One hour and five, six minutes into the goddamn show. This is what I'm saying, man. If this ever happens to us, ever happens for us, we're only reading comments for 45 minutes. And after those 45 minutes, all the other comments, you're fucked. That's the way I'm going to be from now on, if, if this gets popping. Uh, it's been four years, so I doubt it's ever going to pop. But anyways... Uh, thank you all for commenting again on social medias. Whatever you send me, I will show and post as long as it's not your credentials. Gober, that one time you're sending me your ID, you dumbass. <laughs> and uh, as long as it's not your credentials or porn, uh, I'll show whatever you send me. Send me a fucking a picture of your, uh, your, your pet or whatever. Or something you bought. I don't care. I'll show it here. Joku sends me all of his drugs that he legally, legally buys down the corner store on his state. That's so badass, motherfucker. So I always show that shit. Uh, but before we leave, I do. Uh, we do have your weekly redneck advice, life advice from none other than our very own Gomer Kyle. Gomer Kyle, take it away. Hey everybody, welcome back to Gomer's Redneck Advice of the Week. This week's advice is simple. Like most weeks, just don't stick your dick crazy. If you stick your dick crazy, you got to put that bitch for the rest of your life if you get her pregnant. Don't go down to Lanita's trailer just because she ain't got nothing on and stick your dick in that crazy bitch. Anyways, that's the advice this week. And if you have any advice you want to know, ask in the comments. I'll read them and I'll answer your questions that next Friday. Anyways, everybody, cheers. Hashtag woke pack for life. Hashtag woke son for life. Hey, Comer, the, the first time I'm actually going to fucking intervene here and say, I don't agree with your life advice because if Juanita down the street has a really big ass, I don't give a fuck if she's crazy. You're going to have to get stick your dick in it for sure, especially if she wants you to do it. I think the advice should have been, don't date or marry crazy. You know what I'm saying? If you want to fuck with crazy, that's okay. You know, as long as you don't make it exclusive, there's nothing wrong with it. They're just like, you know, it's just, an ass is an ass. You know what they say? Oh, yeah. Cheers, Gomer. Thank you for his redneck advice. <laughs> You gotta send me a picture, Gomer. Send me a picture. Ah, yeah, you motherfuckers. All right. We're done with the comments. And surprisingly, after a tequila shot and nearly done with my buzzball chillers, I don't need to piss yet. Hmm. Oh, well. So we're gonna continue the show and we're gonna go right into. The Weekly Pop Culture Breakdown. And this week, we're going to go right into it because there's not a lot to talk about, but I want to get out of the way. We're going to go right into the Yeezy! <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, and I know we said it last week that his ex number one, Milo Yunonopoulos, or whatever the fuck his fake African name is, uh, he had these outrageous claims that Kanye was paying his doctor $50,000 a month to supply him with nitrous gas, nitrous oxide whippets. So that this motherfucker could get high on his spare time and then fuck his wife and shit while they're both fucking brain dead. 
Basically, I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun, especially with his wife, because she's fucking phenomenal. I ain't gonna lie. She's, right now, she's the most hottest, famous person out there. Natural. Natural, because there's a lot of fakes out there, you know, BBLs, liposuctions, and enhancements, but this bitch is all natural. Trust me, we've seen it. Everyone's seen it. This bitch walks around, walks around naked, basically. Anyways. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, because this story has now been publicized, and, and he's been, you know, everybody's still chastising him, and he's spreading all these rumors, and lies, and shit. His law firm, his personal lawyer, Brian Brumfield, from the Brumfield Law Group, has decided to drop Yeze as his client. And he says, I no longer want to represent you in all these lawsuits from these parents from that school where you had all these fucking kids in cages. I don't want to represent you from these fucking employees that you were telling them, I don't like dreadlocks. You need to shave your head to be bald like me or you're fired. I don't want to represent you for the motherfuckers you were sending porn of you jacking off, watching your wife getting fucked by other men. I don't want to represent you anymore because you're doing drugs that you paid your dentist, according to Milo Giannopoulos and shit. Ain't that some ass, y'all? Because of rumors, some ex-employee is spreading about the Yeze. Now his representation doesn't even want to represent him. Could you imagine if I was fucking famous? All these people spreading lies about me. I did this. I did that. Are you telling me you woke pack members would fucking abandon me because of rumors and lies and slander from people? Ex-employees? Because that's what's happening to my Yeezy. I don't believe none of this. This man is a genius. How can a genius make vultures and vultures too? If he was on natural nitrous sock site. I've done nitrous sock site. We talked about it in the comments, okay? I went brain dead for two days and I never did it again. I did do 24 canisters in a couple of hours. It was amazing. But I refuse to believe that this man, this genius right here, who gave us uh, fucking all the best songs in the past fucking two decades. Is fucked out of his mind. It's a lie. That's all I'm gonna say. And that's all the news we have right now because I have a lot of other shit, so I have to cut it short. Yay, Zay, we love you on this channel. There's no way in hell this is true. It's all slander. We don't believe it at all. Fuck this lawyer and shit. We're moving on. And next, none other. Then the great Joaquin Phoenix is being chastised all over Hollywood, friends. Yeah. Why? Because this dumbass decided to drop out of a multi million dollar production five days before they're about to start. Now, what kind of actor, especially a renowned actor, amazing fucking actor, a Joaquin Phoenix. By the way, you pussy, you disappointed me in that new Napoleon movie because you didn't even try to act like Napoleon, you dumbass. It was an okay performance, all right? Your, your, your emotions were in it, but you pissed me off because you didn't even try to be French or nothing. Idiot. He's good when he wants to be. He's one of these lazy motherfuckers, these privileged mall prick motherfuckers who was probably born rich and shit. All right, the, the real talent in your family is dead, overdosed in that club. River Phoenix, and he was beautiful. I'm like, you're a fucking weird ass. Look at you, your nose is crooked. I still respect you though, because you're a good actor when you want to be. But I don't respect you for this, my friends. This is a movie. That apparently was going to be shot in Guadalajara, Mexico. Already sets were built. Production was going to start. And here's where it gets even thicker. Apparently, 
This movie was actually pitched by Joaquin Phoenix. Pitched to the director. There's his face. I don't know his fucking name. Because this is not that kind of channel where we know all the facts. But that's the picture of the director. Some fucking nerd in Hollywood. Whatever his name is. You know, he's supposed to be good or famous. Alright. He pitched the movie to the director. And to the studio. Got this all moving. And then five days before. Or by the way, that's Denny Ramirez. Or I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, again. I go to college and it's a one man show. There's no script in front of me. I'm doing my best. This is probably why we only have 600 subscribers. Fuck off. All right. Danny Ramirez, the Falcon's sidekick in the new Captain America movie or whatever. The new Falcon, because the Black Falcon is now the Captain America. The new Falcon was going to be the, 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 the side role in this or whatever. Supporting role. I'll tell you more about it. Joaquin went up to the studio. And to this fucking nerd, uh, not Danny, the fucking director. When I say nerd, it's usually a motherfucker with glasses, alright? Let's be honest. <sighs> Fuck you, he who should not be named. Pussy. Anyways. Joaquin Phoenix went up to them and said, Hey, I want to get an Oscar for something really good. How about we make a gay film? Where I'm like, this guy who falls in love with a younger guy. And there's going to be all this sex scenes and shit like that where I'm making expressions like I'm taking it in the ass. They'll definitely get me an Oscar. And this fucking nerd in the studio said, that's genius. Let's do it. So they fucking got this all ready. And then Joaquin drops off five days before they start production. Oh my god. What happened? Did he get cold feet? I don't know. Some people in the internet are saying the rumors around the water coolers. Apparently, Joaquin Phoenix thought he was going to be being gay by himself. You know, just like masturbating, watching other guys or some shit like that. No, motherfucker, did Hollywood in 2024. We're going to have a guy put it in you. And I think Joaquin felt a little intimidated once they showed him the guy who was going to be putting it in him, this hottie, up-and-comer, fucking Danny Ramirez. This is our new Falcon, by the way. Look at him, motherfucker. Oh, my God. He's shredded. You motherfuckers. He's shredded. He's pretty short, though. He's a Mexican. You know, he's like me. No big deal. No big deal. I, I, I appreciate a man who has put in that work for Hollywood. They're not my motherfuckers who put in that work. A lot of motherfuckers are talented, though. And they don't need to work. You know, Jack Black, he doesn't need to work at all. Motherfucker doesn't work at all, but he's talented. This motherfucker needs to work to look like this. Oh, yeah. He's not talented. He's not a good actor. But God damn it, he looks good on film. He looks good on this picture. That's all I'm going to say. Um... Fuck you, Joaquin. You disappoint me. This is the most unprofessional bullshit I've ever heard in my life. You're the one who instigated this movie. You're the one with the idea. You got the ball rolling. And then you quit. Five days before. Millions of fucking dollars were spent fucking reserving hotels for staff for actors paying this fucking pretty boy over here who worked his ass off this motherfucker worked hours to get this fucking body days and months this doesn't happen over a weekend god damn it and you quit five days before they're about to start You not you guys know me. I don't like going to the theaters. I hate it. But the Joker movie, the next one that's coming out. Cuz I didn't even go to see Wolverine and Deadpool in the theaters. You know how we see movies and I'll show you tonight, Alien Romulus. Um I didn't even go see Deadpool and Wolverine. 
I was going to go see Joker. Pay for it. I'm not anymore. Because this is the most spoiled fucking man in Hollywood. And he let me down. He let me down the same way Will Smith let me down. By completely ruining his fucking career. An awesome image that he had. And I hate to even say it. But it's true. I might even shed a tear as I say it. But Sean Combs let me down, fellas. Sean Combs really let me down. I was bad boy for life. For life. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Anyways, let's move on. Fuck you, Joaquin Phoenix. You let me down, you asshole. Let's move on. That's enough of that. All right. <sighs> breathe, 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 breathe. <sighs> I'm sorry, but, you know, like some of us grow up and we love celebrities. We really look up to them. And then you find out that they're real people. And then you find out that some of them are really fucking disgusting and perverts and should probably be in jail. Yeah, it's fucked up. But anyways, let's keep going because a lot of stuff happened this week. And guess what? Rob Schneider and his daughter, L. King. I love this little girl. I actually was listening to her music before I even knew she was fucking Rob Schneider's fucking daughter. When I found out she was Rob Sch Schneider's daughter, it was like a brick hit the side of my face. Because I've been listening to little, this little girl for a few years already. Um, she started off kind of alternative, popish, uh, transitioned into country, shit like that, blues. She's a, she's a really, really good singer, man. I know she got really drunk when they did a Dolly Parton tribute concert. She got really drunk and went on stage, and, and it was just pathetic. But she's young, man. You know, she wasn't even bored when Dolly Parton, or, you know, was in a prime, or, you know, so I understand, like, you know, it's a different generation. She goes up there, she was, she was having fun, she got really drunk, she goes on stage and acts like an ass. And just ruined her own, the, 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 the tribute she was trying to do for, I don't blame her for that. A lot of people do, but what are you going to do? If I was young and famous, I would have done worse. I would have been naked on stage, pulling my dick out. Because I wouldn't have realized I would have been on stage in front of people. That's how fucked up I would have been. So, you know, give her a break, assholes. Well, this week, Elle was in a podcast and uh, some revelations came out. I'm just going to pull ahead and play the video so you all can hear. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about what's going on here. Your dad was one of my childhood crushes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you are a daughter of Rob Schneider. Yep. I go for like four or five years without talking to my dad. about my record and people finally started asking about my dad. My dad called me and was like, don't fucking talk about me in the press. I was like, get fucked. If I would ever spend a summer with my dad, it would be on a movie set. I would just get lost in the shuffle. I was like a really, really heavy child. My dad sent me to fat camp. And then I got in trouble one year because I sprained my ankle and I didn't lose any weight. I disagree with a lot of the things that he says. You're talking shit about drag and, you know, anti-gay rights. And it's like, get fucked. I want to use this opportunity to say, I disagree. I do not agree with what he says. He never helped me. I never wanted his help. He also right. didn't have a very good reputation. I don't want to be associated with him. Okay. But like my dad forgot it's about every space. single birthday. Like I spent my 18th birthday in a summer school and they brought me cupcakes and I came home. My dad forgot my birthday. You're I, killing my fantasy of Rob. I'm here. so sorry. It's over. It's done. It's I'm over so with. Um, before I say anything, who the fuck is this chick who has the hots for Rob Schneider? God damn it. If she likes him, God, imagine me. Man, I would have gotten her pregnant already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Enough of that shit. Look, honestly, I identify a lot with her. 
Uh, not that my, you know, I fucking like her or whatever, but, you know, that's the kind of the same way, you know? You, you know, you come from a different generation, and me personally, my parents are Mexican. Don't know a goddamn word of English. And if it was up to me, I would have those two sons of bitches deported. I don't know why the wall isn't built yet. Anyways. <sighs> they never liked me or accepted me. You wonder why. There's not a lot of people in Mexico who look like this. Uh, so yes, I kind of identify with her because it's two different generations. And the stuff you like and are exposed to and you want to do tattoos and piercings and makeup and women's underwear and clothing. That kind of shit don't fly with the old generation. They really don't. And I understand that kind of shit. I really do. So I identify with her and I understand, you know... Uh, her, she's, and I don't think, me personally, I mean, if you're just saying what, what it was like growing up, it's nothing bad. I, what I didn't like, it was longer, it was longer, you know what I'm saying, it's super long. But uh, I don't want to get copywritten or whatever, because we need one more strike away from being deleted, so I have to chop it up. She never really said anything nice. And that did bother me because I could say a lot of bad things about my birth givers. A lot. And I, and, I, and, I, and I can. But I could also say a lot of good things. Because at the end of the day, you don't provide for yourself as a child. You're helpless. You don't have a job. You didn't become a rock star when you were fucking six years old and shit. So this man... Provided and took care of you. Not only that, provided and took care of you in ways that a lot of us were never provided for or taken care of. Because he's a fucking movie star. So that that kind of bothered me about that. Because if, if you're going to talk about the bad times, you should also be fair and talk about the good times. I'm just trying to be honest with myself. I can't hate my parents 100%. Yes, they don't like any of this. And they will never accept it. And I was called Baggett and a bunch of other things growing up. But at the end of the day, uh, I wouldn't be here without them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yes, th that bothered me. And I think in that sense, and I think she's still young. She's still young, and I think as she grows older, because she ain't stupid. I, I, like I said, I was listening to her before she was, I knew she was even, they, now that I see it, they really do look alike. She looks like him. They got the same eyes, for sure they got the same eyes. His eyes are a little bit more chinkier, but you know, th it's the same eyeball is there. The same fucking grin and smile. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know, I, I, it was just one of those things I never, nobody knew. I didn't know. Uh, but Rob, because this was on the internet and went viral, Rob also saw this. And I'm going to go ahead and, and let you see, because Rob had an interview, and uh, the great Tucker Carlson brought this up on his show. Hopefully we don't get a strike for this, but I try to chop it off as much as I could. Here we go. I read what looked like a... Sorry. <laughs> I'm fucking up left and right. I read what looked like a family tragedy playing out in the news. Your daughter going after you in it's fun being a parent, isn't it? <laughs> it can be hard. Hey, what, yeah. what, what was that? Well, I want to just tell my daughter, Elle, I love you. And, um, I, I wish I was the, the father in my twenties that, uh, that you needed. And, um, uh, clearly I wasn't. And I hope you can forgive me for my shortcomings. I love you completely. I love you entirely. And I just want you to be well and happy with you and your beautiful baby, Lucky. I wish you the best. I, I feel terrible. And I, I just want you to know that I don't take anything you say personally. So you didn't make any excuses or blame her or attack back. How hard is that? If you love somebody completely, you just, I love her. And all I want for her is to be happy and to heal from this. Wow. I just gotta say that I respect the man because 
he didn't like he like like Carlson said, you didn't try to defend yourself or nothing. You just told her you're sorry. And I think that that's the way we all should be at, as far as what what growing up. I hate when people say, "Oh, act like a grown up." I hate that shit. Because god damn it. When the fuck do you actually stop getting old? When? Never. So you literally never stop growing up. And that's the way it is in life. There's stages in life. Different fucking things you're going to experience. And you're always growing and learning. So they're the fucking idiots that say act like a grown up. Motherfucker, you're not even grown up. You're never going to be grown up. You idiots. It's the stupidest fucking phrase I've ever heard. And it pisses me off when I hear someone say it. It really sets me off. It sets me the fuck off when I hear someone say some stupidity like grow up and shit. Fuck you. He knows he didn't treat her right. And because she thinks differently. And I think the problem with most parents. I'm glad I don't have children by the way. Oh, God damn it. All right, I was smart. I pull out and come in her face. I ain't stupid. All right, or you fuck men. That way you don't get no one pregnant. I don't give a fuck what these non-binaries want to tell you. Men cannot get pregnant. All right. Anyways, um, <laughs> the fucking. At least he's able to fucking admit to himself. I have grown and learned, and I understand that that I that she was her own person. And she needed to be who she wants to be. And I fucked up because I wanted her to be someone else. But now that I see that she's a rock star and she's doing herself and doing her own thing, I realize now, and that's really what he means, that I should have let her be. Be the person that she is. Parents are stupid when they want to fucking, oh, my kid's going to be a doctor. My kid's going to grow up to, fuck you. Your kid has his own brain. And one of these days, he's going to make up his own fucking mind. And if you don't fucking understand that, you're going to be miserable and probably make his life miserable too. Because, because you don't understand that. It's like, yes, they came out of you, but they're not you. We're all fucking, we have our own fucking brains, our own likes and dislikes. And God damn it, this is who you are. And I respect Rob Schneider for, for, for doing that, you know. I hope this little girl talks to him again. Because from what I get from this, this is the first time I ever heard that this was going on. They're obviously not in speaking terms or, you know, very good with each other, so. They seem, they seem, they both seem nice, man. They both seem nice. And yeah, I know I've, I follow him on Twitter and he's a little Melanie Mac. Not on the religious side, but on the political side. He's really fucking, ugh. sometimes it bothers me. I fucking mute him sometimes because I don't want to fucking hear his rhetoric. Like, motherfucker, you say something funny. I don't give a shit about this political ass. That shit pisses me off about some of these people I, I fucking look up to. It's like, I don't give a fuck. Give me what I'd watch you for, you idiots. Anyways, I wish both of these people, I wish both of them to come together and be okay again. That's all I'm trying to say. Anyways, uh, let's move on from this. Uh, like I said, I wish them the best. This week, though, there was some celebrities that had some run-in with their fans. And it wasn't quite what they were used to, unfortunately. Well, none other than Justin Bieber and his wife, Haley uh, Baldwin. You know, this is a Baldwin, one of the Baldwin's little daughters. This guy got pregnant. And she's all right. She wasn't that cute. But whatever. It's Bieber. What are you going to do? He was fucking Selena Gomez, a little chubby chick. It was like, whatever. Look like a chipmunk. I mean, dumbass. We got S Sydney Sweeney out there, single as fuck. This guy's getting this chick pregnant. A dumbass. Anyways, she's not even famous. I mean, she has a famous dad, but she's not famous. She's talentless. That's what I don't understand, this dumbass. I would have been fucking Sydney Sweeney or Billie Eilish or, or fucking Sabrina Carpenter or somebody like that. You get pregnant like that, motherfucker. All right, dumbass. Guess there's nobody, this Nepo baby, pregnant. 
<sighs> Anyways. So, uh, apparently, they were out and about and staying at a hotel. And they ran into some fans. Young fans. This generation's fans. And Bieber didn't seem to take a liking to them. Let me show you the video. We talk about it in a little bit. It's funny. It's funny to you guys. No, this is funny to you guys. I just thought about it. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. It's not funny, bro. So. All these kids surrounded him and his pregnant wife and were taking pictures and shit. And uh, I guess, you know, he was probably high or drunk or something and he didn't like it. And he was telling them to leave and all these kids were laughing and they didn't leave and they kept on taking pictures and look at them all with their phones out. You know, this is these dumbass fucking new generation of fucking idiots. Because I see them all the time walking down the street in their fucking phone. Can you even look where you're walking, you fucking idiot? These kids are so lost. And I'm, I'm happy that I'm old and I'm probably going to die soon. I'm, I really am. Because goddamn, the future looks pathetic. If, these are, if this is the generation that's going to take over, a bunch of idiots that are already brainwashed and just staring at their phones and shit are always having a phone out. I hate when you see a concert nowadays, everybody's with their phones out. Motherfucker, can you not enjoy the motherfucking show and have the experience of a lifetime without you taking out a goddamn phone to show off on selfies, on Instagrams, or whatever the ass you fucking do nowadays? days god damn it I'm with Bieber on this I understand why he gets mad I would have fucking started grabbing asses and penises they, they're laughing they're laughing they think this is oh you think this is funny motherfucker I would have just started grabbing penises and balls like that and they would have run away oh my god oh my god but I would have started done it Oh, motherfucker. Let's see who's laughing now. Pussies. Put your phone. Put your phone down. They all would have dropped their phones. The minute I grabbed their balls, they would have dropped their phones. The little pussy. That little motherfucker with the blonde hair. That little fat motherfucker with the black shirt. Fuck, grab his balls just like that. Son of a bitch. I definitely grabbed that Asian lady's ass for sure. Oh, yeah. Cheers! <laughs> Beaver doesn't know how to handle these kids. Oh, you want a picture, motherfucker? Come here. Let's make out. Scare the shit out of them. They're going to run away. They never want to take a picture with you. Dumbass. Beaver's a dumbass. You don't know how to handle the, these motherfuckers nowadays. It's all right. He's, a, he's one, of these, one of these kids, you know. He's always been famous since he was a little boy. So he doesn't know how to handle real motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, we're moving on. And I didn't realize, and I want to apologize to everybody down here in the chat tonight, that Andrew Sanchez, straight from the Philippines, is here! We don't test any of our products on animals. We use Filipino children. This is for you, Andrew Sanchez. I know this is not a beer, all right? This is Buzzball Chillers made by women for men who dress like women. Cheers. Delicious. Thank you, Andrew Sanchez, for being here this Saturday morning for you, my Filipino friend. Cheers to y'all. Again, uh... Every once in a while, I might glance down, but if I'm doing the show, I'm doing the show. During the comments, I'm definitely seeing what you all are typing. I go back during the week, and I, and, I, and I watch it, and I see what you guys type. It's funny. But thank you for being here, Andrew Sanchez. We love you on this channel. And don't you ever forget. Aw, oh, yeah. 
Anyways. Uh, <laughs> where were we? Because I don't even remember. Uh, fucking Andrew. You see what you do? Come on, this channel, you fuck us all up. No, I just remembered. All right. This week, we had two long old friends come together on the Twitter. And it was none other than Kevin Sorbo and Lucy Lawless. Yeah. From fucking Hercules and Xena Warrior Princess. I used to watch both of these shows. I really, really liked Hercules. It was badass. And he's hot. He was back then. He was hot as fuck. And he had muscles. And there was no Twitter. So I wouldn't hear his dumb shit. Uh, but, you know, I liked him. Lucy Lawless. I'm going to be lying. I would watch Xena Princess because it was right before it. So I was bored. I had to watch something before it. Um, before Hercules. Uh, I was okay. There was a lot of lesbianism that I wasn't into. And I would be perfectly honest with you. I've never, never found Lucy Lawless attractive with fucking as a brunette or, or dark hair. She has uh, dark hair. Sorry. She looks good as a brunette or as a redhead or even as a blonde. She's hot as fuck. She's a beautiful, beautiful woman right now at this very age, man. I swear to God, look her up. She's hot. Uh, but I did never found Xena, Warrior Princess, attractive with her fucking dark, fucking, I don't know, hair and shit. God damn it. But she, she, I know she's beautiful. I know. You know, I know she is. I've seen her naked, as I'm sure you all have. Aw, oh, yeah. But anyways, Kevin Sorbo decided to post on his motherfucking uh instagram his opinions about the coming elections just like he always does and he posted this very controversial twit tweet that got everyone all riled up he said if kamala really is black have her say the n-word let the people decide for themselves <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy, man. Uh, I follow this guy, and he pisses me the fuck off. He's like Melanie Mack. That I follow him because I think they're hot. You know what I mean? I love fucking, you know, looking at Melanie Mack and shit. She needs to start wearing bikinis and shit. I swear she'd get a lot of more followers. Nobody would give a fuck what she's saying. Just put mute and watch her stream. Oh, yeah. You're fucking a Melanie Mack. You could be a millionaire. Um... So, you know, this guy, I follow him because he's hot and whatever. Back in the day. And he pisses me off with his rhetoric sometimes. <laughs> this was funny. <laughs> this is stupid and funny. Look, I live... Uh, out, like, I'll put it out there and I'll say it like this. I am the lightest skinned person in my neighborhood. And I'm pretty fucking brown, motherfuckers. So that just goes to tell you uh, what part of the town I live in. I live in a hood. I've witnessed four murders in the ten years I've been living here. I'll never admit to it in court, but I've seen it. Anyways. Um, none of my neighbors. Nobody I've spoken to around the neighborhood. And definitely none of the crackheads walking around asking me for money. But none of them like this lady. Kamala. This Kamala Khan. Motherfucking birch. Uh, trying to run against our savior. That racist, orange-haired rapist. He's the only hope for this country. <laughs> it's why we know we're fucked. Alright? Because the orange-haired rapist <laughs> is the only hope. The savior for this country. Because the other idiots are just trying to keep all of us poor. God damn it. Ah. <sighs> But yeah, nobody around here is going to vote for this lady. And I don't know where this fake news is coming from. But God damn it, it is fake. Because everyone I speak to doesn't like her. So I don't know why the news is saying, oh, she's beating him in all the polls. That's what they were saying with Clinton. We know how that ended up. So it's fake. So whatever. Anyway, I thought this was funny. Uh, but Lucy Lawless 
A lot of people, you know, hated on him for this. He's being racist and this and that. Lucy Lawless, because, you know, they've known each other for a while, decided to chime in on this. And, uh, and she decided to, to defend her old friend. This is what she tweeted, my friends. In his defense, I personally witnessed a time when Kevin stuck up for about black man against white people. He ta she tags a bunch of motherfuckers, I don't know. And she says, the NZ summer, I don't know what that means. February 95, when my character Xena was introduced to my husband's show, because her husband was actually the showrunner for fucking uh, Hercules. We actors were sitting around, and I brought up the news, and I said, Hey guys, did you guys hear about that woman and her friend who were brutally murdered in L.A.? I think it was a football player that did it. And so Kevin growled back, Hey, I knew Nicole, and let me tell you, she was no picnic. Boo! Fucking Lucy Lawless! <laughs> Fucking talking about this guy was defending OJ back in the day. Like another day. Oh, no, don't worry. He's not racist. He loves black people. <laughs> she deserves another one, fellas. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm more in love with her now than I was before. I could give a fuck about their political opinions. It's these jabs that are fucking badass. If that's the kind of fucking bitch she is, that's the bitch I want to marry. Hey, get in the kitchen and make me some pie. And then she replies with some ass. And I'm like, oh, you bitch, that was good. Cheers. You know what I'm saying? I don't care, you know? I just want a snappy reply back, witty as me. Oh, fucking, that was awesome, man. I don't know if she was just being angry because of what he was saying, but that was cold and perfect, man. I don't know what their relationship currently is, but uh, I got a feeling that's probably true. <laughs> what she said that he said. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I laughed so hard when I fucking saw this this week. I just needed to fucking tell you guys. Because I know y'all don't fucking look at celebrities like I do. Cheers to my beauty queen, Lucy Lawless. Cheers. That was a badass fucking... <laughs> that was a fucking badass burn. Oh. All right, all right, all right. Apparently, there was a woman who died while eating at a Disney restaurant at one of the resorts from food poisoning. Yeah, from eating their overexpensive, non-cooked, microwaved fucking food. She died. The Frito-Lays, they say they're going to come with fries. They just open a bag of Frito-Lays and dump a couple of chips in there. There's your fucking chips. You dumbass, you pay $47 for a fucking hamburger and chips. You fucking people are idiots. This lady died from eating ass from a Mickey Mouse park. Horrible. Horrible story. Where her husband tries to be an even horrible person and decides to sue the shit out of Disney. And you would expect, with something like this, that he would get some kind of compensation back for his wife dying at a goddamn amusement park where the food was served to, to you uncooked. That shit should have been in the microwave for four minutes. That idiot 15-year-old you hired only put it there for two and a half. That shit wasn't cooked enough. Your $57 hamburger was not cooked well enough in the microwave because the idiot 15-year-old you hired forgot to put four minutes and he only put two minutes. You would expect to get some kind of compensation back. 
for losing your wife. Well, no, sorry, Bob. Not in this fucking timeline we're currently in. Because in this fucking timeline, Disney found a way. <sighs> I'm not even making this up. I say a lot of bullshit on this channel, and the warning even tells you that nothing that I say is real. But I'm not even making this up. Disney and their lawyers got out of the lawsuit. Because this man and his wife subscribed to Disney+. Plus. I'm letting it sink into your heads. I didn't make that up. This whole thing was thrown out of court because that man and his wife subscribe, have a Disney Plus subscription. Because apparently... In the most South Park kind of human centipad way, there is a disclosure on any Disney product, app, subscription, or ass you partake in the company. And you have to click on, I agree, to download or get a subscription or all that shit. You have to. And a lot of us download all these apps and all this shit and we just put accept and agree without even fucking, I don't want to read this five page super little small letter. I don't want to read any of this. Agree. Download it. Let me see it. That's what we all do. Apparently in the fucking Disney contract, it says that if any shit, anything happens where you're going to sue them for something. It has to be settled out of court. It cannot go to a court, a judge or lawyers or nothing like that. And by you clicking agree, you agree to those terms. And so you and no one can ever, ever sue Disney for any fucking reason. And if you want to settle out of court, it's literally you going to their offices and being, I want to speak to Robert Iger because my wife died. Oh, sir, he's busy. Come back tomorrow. And that's the way it's going to be forever. Oh, my God. Folks, we download apps all the time. We download games and shit and a half. You understand that half of the shit you've downloaded on your phone, the applications, the Chick-fil-A apps and all this shit to order online, all of them, all of them have access to your camera, to your fucking, uh, to your contacts, to your text messages. What do any of those apps need that for? They don't need it, but they have it. Every time you're there home alone, Looking at porn on your phone and you're masturbating through your phone there in your room. Someone is watching you. Every text message and everything you do. As long as your phone is turned on and you've downloaded at least one fucking app. Someone is watching you. I feel bad for this man and for this lady who one of you guys said it was an allergic reaction or some shit because uh, they were stupid enough to ask what's in the food what's in this microwave piece of shit I'm ordering this $70 fucking microwavable hamburger you're gonna fucking serve me what's in it because I might be allergic and die ah <sighs> It's a sad, it's a sad story, but I think the real fucking wake up call 
is um, we're all fucked. And everything we do is someone's always watching. Whether you think it or not, it's they are. Nothing is private anymore. And we did it to ourselves. Fuck. I genuinely feel bad for this man. But that's the world we live in today. Oh. All right, let's get into some better news. Some, some good celebrity, good times, some good feelings. Man, we've been really fucking shitting and pissing on ass. This week, none other than the great Janet Jackson surprised the fuck out of everyone by having this interview right here. Stevie Wonder. Now, someone told me this earlier. Are you related to Stevie? He's our cousin. How have I gone that I, long in life? Not without... a lot of people know that he's our cousin on my mother's side. Hi. So is Tracy Chapman. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. So, can we, so can we is, go through the family tree again? So is Samuel Jackson. <laughs> so Stevie is what to you? My cousin. Tracy Chapman. Cousin. Samuel Jackson. He would be a cousin too. I mean, he's not my brother. <laughs> right, yeah, fine. But yes. I never knew. How... The fuck? What reality or timeline have we been pushed into that this is suddenly real? The Jacksons are cousins to these people? Now, I understand Samuel Jackson because his last name is Jackson. I mean, I mean, I didn't see it, but God damn it, the motherfucker does look like he could be one of the other Jacksons. Stevie Wonder is musically talented, and so is Tracy. I love Tracy Chapman, you know. Give me one reason to be here, and I'll turn right back around. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Tracy Chapman! <laughs> Stevie Wonder's good, too, but he's blind. You know how I feel about that shit. Anyways. Shit. This... I was blown away, and I know a lot of the internet was all like, what the fuck? Are you trying to tell me that all these motherfuckers spent time with Michael? Possibly? I don't know. I mean, he is their, with their cousin. All these people are famous. You would think, at the very least, eventually, like, yeah, let me hang out with my famous cousin. You think Samuel hang out with Michael? <laughs> What's up, motherfucker? Michael's like, hey, Sam, calm down. Don't do that, I said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, about Stevie? He couldn't see shit, so he wouldn't even know Michael was in the room unless he would think a little mouse is talking, a little mouse squealing and shit. Tracy Chapman. Damn. It's pretty insane. Something I want to share with you guys because I thought it was fucking cool. Sorry, y'all are not entertained. All right, uh, just something that blew me away. I think it blew a lot of people away and shit. Uh, but we're going to finish the celebrities with one last little bit of ass. That might be good or not. I don't know. I'll let you decide. But they just announced a day or two ago that none other than Nick fucking Cage is going to portray... John Madden in a biopic about him but also slash about how the ga the game John Madden football even got started the creation of it this is very fucking interesting I like Nick Cage I just don't see him as John Madden. Ah. Especially because he would need to gain a lot of weight to be John Madden. Work out a little bit, but definitely put on the fucking... And I know it's Hollywood and prosthetics. I know that. But this is literally when the first John Madden game was released. 
And that's who he's going to portray. John Madden, at the time, the first game is going to be released because the movie is not really a biopic. It's about the, him trying to get the game to be made. Madden football. So it might have some flashbacks when he's young and being a football. Uh, I think he was a coach, right? I think he was a coach. Uh, I don't think he was. Was he a football player? I don't. I don't go that back. I know he was a coach. I know he coached the. Oh, the Las Vegas Raiders is what they used to be before they moved to Los Angeles, and I don't even know what they are anymore. Are they Oakland? I don't know. I don't. I don't fucking watch it like before. But I know they used to be the Las Vegas Raiders. That's what this fucking asshole used to coach. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm actually doubtful at the, his that he could pull this off. I am. I am. I'm curious. I want to see it. I do. I want to. I'm curious. And he, if he if he pulls this off, I'll have a lot of respect for him. Like, dude. When I heard that fucking uh, Kristen Bale was being Dick Cheney, I said, no way. It's, it's going to be stupid. Especially when Michael Scott, Steve Carell, was fucking uh, Donald Runsmill in that movie. And uh, But I love that fucking movie. And I think Kristen Bale killed it. I think that when I watched that movie, I forgot I was watching Kristen Bale and I was I th yeah, it was Dick Cheney to me he got the mannerisms I think the, a lot of the prosthetics were good he gained some weight he didn't get really he gained some weight obviously but they added prosthetics I think he did good at Cheney I don't know I'm gonna I'm interested am I hopeful I don't know man this is a weird choice I can sort of see it in the face a little bit. But it's just going to it's going to depend on whether he gains the weight and the in the makeup department. That's what it's going to come down to. And his acting chops, man. Cuz John Madden does not act like Nicolas Cage. Obviously. Anyways, uh that's it for the weekly pop culture breakdown. Cheers to our celebrities. Let's get this going with the comic book nerd shit of the week. And this week, we got a trailer for Yakuza Like a Dragon. What the fuck? I didn't even know they were doing this. This is a game. Uh, kind of like GTA style, but it's one of these Japanese games, so it's a little different where, you know, there's weird stuff in it. But it's basically about a Yakuza's, you know? Um, there's been so many games already. And I gotta tell you, this is gonna be dope as fuck. Or at least I thought it was going to be. <sighs> Let me explain to you why. Because a day or two after they showed the goddamn trailer... That I was all fucking masturbating and jizzing all over myself and getting ready to tell you guys how cool this shit was gonna fucking be and ass. All of a sudden, people are told they interviewed some of the actors, and the actors said that when they got the parts, they were specifically told, all the actors were specifically told to not play the games and not research the internet 
of what Yakuza Like a Dragon is. At all. Here's the script and do the script. Don't bother reading the lore. Don't you play the fucking games. Don't you look to history or no information about the character you're playing at all. Here's the script. This is what you're going to do. We're off to a really bad start already. This is fucking Halo. Which, by the way, they've ruined and completely fucking dropped the ball with that franchise. Idiots. This is fucking Halo. This is fucking, uh, what was it? Secret, secret, secret invasion from Marvel. Where everyone was told, don't bother reading the comic books. And guess what? The show was nothing like the comic books. It sucked ass and was boring. And bullshit. This is what's wrong with Hollywood. When you choose a target audience and then decide, we're not going to do anything the target audience like. We're going to do our own thing, but we're going to name it the stuff that they like. And we're going to make a lot of money. No, you idiots. That's why Borderland failed on a hundred million budget. It's only made 18 million worldwide. Because people aren't stupid. People know when you're feeding them ass. That is not like the shit they grew up with. It's not like the shit they've been playing. It's not like the lore. It's not like the character. You dumb fucks. When are they going to learn? Do these... Is there like... Like an award? To see what studio... Wastes the most money in Hollywood. Oh, Sony spent the most money and and and, and made nothing back this year. Oh, let's all give them an award for this. Is there like a secret club where they celebrate this that we know nothing about? I honestly think that studios are gaslighting us. They are purposely making ass out of the stuff we love so that we can be angry. And then we go out there and the gas is high and the food prices are high and fucking Kamala Khan. Is being an idiot saying stupid rhetoric and Joe Biden and Trump and everyone's mad. And that's all they're doing. They're making us angry and keeping us mad. They want us to fucking create chaos. Because if they didn't, they would make good shows for us. They have Star Wars is the biggest example of why Disney is gaslighting everyone. There are thousands of books and video games of lore you could have used. And you threw it all away and said, let's all make our own fucking dumb shit. <sighs> the trailer looks badass. I'm not going to lie. It's beautiful. Very artistic. But when I read an article that says you told all the actors, don't read any of the lore. Don't search the internet. Don't play the fucking video games. It really just, all my expectations are out the window. Plain and simple. <sighs> Hollywood is either being run by fucking morons or they're gaslighting all of us on purpose. This is bullshit. <sighs> it's not all ass. Luckily, it's not all ass. There are some people out there that have some kind of talent in their fucking body and are able to produce and shit out masterpieces. And this fucking guy, I don't know what his name is. I might get it wrong. Fede Alvarez or some fucking guy, some foreigner 
who did Alien Romulus, who is currently sitting with the critics at 81% and with the fucking audience at 87%. And I got a feeling both of those scores will go up by the end of the run of the movie. They'll be higher. I, I got a feeling. I'm going to review and spoil the whole movie. And you know how I do. But before that, I'm going to give you my verdict. This is the best alien movie I have ever seen. I think it beats the first one. When I'm ranking them, I'm putting this one above the... Obviously, the first one is always everyone's favorite because it's the best. They did everything perfect. This one's... F I really love this movie. God damn it. I can't wait till it's on digital so I can see it in all its glory. Nah, no, nah, no, nah, I gotta tell you, there is some shit. You know, you know, you know, I gotta they're gonna find some bad stuff about it, and I will talk about it. But overall, this to me is the best alien movies next to the first one that I've ever seen. Damn, this guy's good. There is so much. suspense or that that feeling of eerie and scariness that was in the first one i feel like it's in this but then there's also that really and thank god ridley scott was a fucking uh producer but there is a fucking this 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 uh ridley this this geiger this really really thick geiger uh, H.R. Geiger element to it. There is a lot of disgusting shit that resembles vaginas and penises and oily body parts in this fucking movie. I don't know if you guys know who H.R. Geiger is. He is the main inspiration besides a lot of the designs in the first Alien movies. Go to your local bookstore and just go buy any book by H.R. Geiger. And look at his fucking paintings and drawings. The statues. This guy had the scariest house in the world. Fucking Ozzy Osbourne has, hasn't got shit on H.I. Geiger. God damn it. That guy was Satan's fucking son. With the kind of fucking monstrosities that were coming out of his head. His art is beautiful. And disgusting and scary as fuck of nightmares. And this movie has a lot of it. A lot of it. It's fucking insane. Timon says YouTube hated it. Yeah, because YouTube is a lot of pussies. Like fucking Eric Voss and Melanie Mack and that other fucking four-eyed motherfucker who trashes everything nowadays because that's all he gets clout out of. Fucking pussy. Anyways. Um, yeah, yeah, and a bunch of other British motherfuckers. But in a real channel where I'm giving you my real fucking opinions because I saw this movie. I didn't pay for it. I downloaded it like I always do. Show you in a little bit. Um, I love this movie. And I, I, before I even start my review and start spoiling and showing you guys, um, fuck. I recommend this. If you don't want to pay for it, don't pay for it. Wait till it comes out on digital. But download it when it does in good quality. And this is good. This is a good watch. This is, this is a good movie. Aliens movie. I thought I thought it's it's really up there. You might not choose it as your top. You might choose another one. This one took the top spot out of all of them for me, to be honest with you. And I hated a lot of the the newer ones like Prometheus and Covenant. I know those two kind of go together, but they piss me off because a lot of the explanation like I didn't understand the movie, and I went to go see those in theaters. I didn't understand them. I had to go on YouTube and watch one of these nerds give me their two hour explanation as what all of it means. And it pissed me off because if that's the kind of movie you go into that you have to go watch some asshole explain to you what you saw, then that's not a movie worth watching. I, I didn't need anyone to explain to me this movie. This, this, was, this was a good movie. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but anyways, 
That's my opinion. Like I said, some of you might not fucking like it. That's okay. Uh, but let me get into the fucking review. And I'll spoil it for you motherfuckers. Um, and by the way, the way this video is going to be shown, I'm doing this in, uh, I guess, uh, I don't want to get another copyright strike, all right? <laughs> so it's weird the way you're going to, it's slowed down and it's chopped. That's the only way I can explain it. But I was able to figure out maybe this YouTube won't fuck me over like this. Fuck you. I see Eric Voss and that heavy spoilers post entire HD fucking scenes and they don't get copyright strikes, those paid shills. Fuck you. Anyways, here's my review. Spoilers for you motherfuckers. Uh, yes. The, the movie actually starts off explain, and you, you, I caught it right away. This takes place in the timeline between part one and part two between alien and aliens alien and aliens it takes place in between because at the beginning the whaling corporations finds this fucking rock or asteroid and they bring it into their ship i'll explain to you later what 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 they find and what it is they're doing but it shows you that they bring it into their ship and shit and when they have it in there, they zoom out, and in there you see the xenomorph is in the rock, kind of like frozen in it. All right. So then it skips into the story. All right. The main story is the main little girl is basically lives in a colony, and in the colony, it's just they're like slaves. They're like it's like kind of like when you sign up for a company. And the company's like, all right, you're going to work for us for 10 years. You can't leave the planet. You are want to work here for 10 years, and then you get the paycheck. So they're fucked, you know? And then she's basically tired of being there. And I guess her fa they don't explain too much, but I'm just trying to do stuff. But I guess her family lived there, and they died or whatever. And the dad, before he died, he found this android, you know, from the whaling company in the trash. And the dad rebuilt it. And uh, fixed it and gave it a, 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 direct, a directive, like an order. And his one directive is keep her safe, what's best for her. And so she grew up calling him, the android, her brother. And it's this black dude. The android, like I said, was in the trash. So they don't show you any of this. This is just, you learn this as the story goes by. So the android was in the trash. So it's not a, a good android. And the dad fixed it. And he's not a genius. So the android acts like a disabled or someone autistic. He just acts, he doesn't act normal. He acts like he's not all there. Like there's, he has a disability. That's basically what he acts like. Uh, and by the way, before I even keep going, that black dude who plays the android, he's, a be he's the only good actor in the movie. Look, I don't like to diss actors. I respect them, what they're doing. And for as much as everyone in this movie played their part to what they're supposed to be. But the one guy who stood out was the fucking android. He is top-notch, good caliber actor. That's all I'm going to say. Um, the point is, her friends have some kind of little toy or satellite. And they figure out, hey, there's a whaling ship that's out of commission floating in orbit. And it has pods. And if we get to that ship, we can take the pods out of it. Put it in our little ship. Put the ship in autopilot. We all get in the pods. And we get the fuck, like, we, we run away from this company. Fuck, we're not going to be slaves for 10, 15 years. We'll get out of here. They come up with this idea. And shit. And she's all like, and they say, they tell the little girl, but we need your brother. But then he's not a brother, it's an android. Because he's a Whalen android. So he will have access to all the doors and all that shit. So that's why that's why they need her. Because they need her brother. Anyways, she agrees and they go and shit. And uh when they go there, uh, you know, they open the doors and shit. And uh they get to this fucking room. Oh, first they find the pods, you know, that they're gonna use to to, to sleep. Because it takes nine years to get away to the next star system. And so they want to put the ship on autopilot, get in the pods, 
sleep for nine years and then wake up when they get when they get to the new planet and they're no longer slaves. That's basically what they're trying to do. When they get inside, and it's not a ship, because when it gets into space, they realize it's a whole space station. It's like a big fucking space station. They're like, fuck, I thought it was just a ship. Well, whatever. No, let's just get in there. They get in there, and uh, they fucking, uh, they, they find out that the, the, the pods only have enough uh, battery for three years. And they're all like, but the trip is for nine years. And so two of the guys says, we'll just keep looking. We'll keep going deeper. And there's got to be more batteries. We'll find them. Uh, so they get to the place where they find the batteries. And it's in this room. But the batteries are keeping this room cold. Or, or, or the batteries are doing something in that room. And these guys, when they remove the batteries out of the fucking room, the room turns on and closes all the doors and shit. Because those batteries were there for a reason. To keep the face huggers that were there in cryo. And when these guys removed the fucking batteries, the fucking face huggers, they obviously start getting unfrozen. And they fucking get loose and shit. So these guys are trapped in that room. So these little girls, because they're like three, two other little girls. Uh, oh, Isabella Merced, which is the hawk, hawk girl. For the Superman movie is in this. And she fucking... Uh, she fucking is, stays in the ship. Because she's pregnant. So she stays in the ship. And the other two little girls. Some bald Asian girl. And this other little girl. The main girl. They go to help the guys who are trapped in the, in the fucking room. And they come up with an idea. Because they say, well... They can open the doors. And they said... There's a, there's a broken down. And there's like a... Because the ship is all fucked up. And there's no one there. But there's a dead uh, android there. And she says, I'm going to pull out the chip out of this dead android. I'll slide it through the bottom of the door. Put it in Andy. That's the name of the, the girl's brother, the android. Put it inside Andy. And that way he'll be able to open the door. So they put it in him. You know, on the side of his neck with the little chip and shit. They put it in him. And, you know, he comes to life. And as the face huggers attack them. So now he's kind of fixed now because they just put a new chip. He's not, re you know, retarded anymore like he used to be because now he has the Wayland chip. And so he actually saves them from the face huggers and they're able to get out of the fucking room. But one of the face huggers gets out and the fucking the Asian chick, it gets wrapped around the Asian chick. And so they don't know what to do, bro. And then the android, Andy, tells them, there's somebody here who knows what we can do. And it's the, the broken android that they took the chip from. So they pick him up and they power him up. And oh my god, bro, I freaked out. Because the android is none other <laughs> than Ian Holm. The guy who played the android Ash from the first movie. Now that's... I. Th it's not Ash. It's not the fucking exact android from the first movie. It's not. You know that they make androids sometimes to look all alike. So it's just another Wayland android. But dude, they used his likeness. And it doesn't look good. I'm not gonna lie. It kind of looks like... Like, they have a puppet there. Like, maybe they did a model and a puppet, uh, you know, that actually resembles him. And maybe they put, like, a filter or a CGI, something where the face moves. You know? It's kind of like those stupid filters on your phone where people put a filter in their faces and they look different. That's kind of what it looks like. It's It doesn't look good. Now, I, I did see it in shitty quality, but I can tell that it's not going to look good, not even in HD. I know it's not. Um, but I was really surprised. But they bring this android to life and they ask him, like, what the fuck happened? And so this guy tells him, like, and this is when you find out that this movie's taking place after the first one. Because he basically says the story from the first movie. And he tells them, this is what fucking happened. And, uh... And the fucking, uh, ever since then, the company, like, the only way they destroyed the alien was to open the hatch and he sucked him into space. 
And he goes, and ever since then, the whaling company has been looking for that specimen. And he goes, and we found it. That was the rock that we found floating in space. The alien was there frozen. And so we brought it in. And we were able to take out samples and fucking recreate everything. And we created face huggers and everything. Everything. And he goes, but we actually deduced everything down to the DNA. And we found out how they were originally created. He goes, before everything went to hell, because obviously they all died because everything went to hell. The face huggers got loose and more aliens spawned and they all died. That's why this space station was alone. But he says, before that, we fucking finally found the source of how it all got started. The goo from Prometheus. From the very first, supposedly in the timeline, they got to that and they were able to extract that. And so they actually have a bunch of vials with that black goo that were eventually in those canisters that they first found in Prometheus. And so he says, we were able to finally re extract that and find out the source of it. And he goes, if we can harness this and inject this into humans, humans could finally live on any planet without needing to breathe air, without anything. Like, we could fucking finally, you know, no more. We wouldn't be fragile and... And he says, this is an important discovery. So, the other two people, you know, he tells them, like, that, that Asian girl, like, that thing laid something in her belly. That's why it's on her head. And it's keeping her alive. And he goes, well, that thing that comes out of her is going to kill you all. You need, to dis you need to kill her. So, the android Andy, the brother, brother, he realizes he's right. And he tries to go after the Asian chick. And so this other guy who's like in love with her runs away. And they run away to the fucking ship. And they leave they leave the main girl and this other guy behind and the android. And they try to run away. And when they're in their ship, the fucking Asian girl starts fucking collapsing. And then the shit pops out of her fucking, you know, her fucking chest and shit. It's disgusting, bro. It's badass. This is some Geiger shit. It's like she's giving birth through her. Ch it looks even better than the first movie. It looks disgusting. It's badass. Um, and I wish I could show you better. But like I said, I ain't going to fucking get banned on get another strike on YouTube for this ass. Um, but anyways, because all this commotion is going on their little ship. Instead of escaping... They actually crash into the space station, those idiots, because, you know, they're fucking panicking and shit. And when they do that, they force... Oh, I'm showing you the vagina there. When they do that, they, they crash into the space station, and then the space station starts moving. And I think they're floating near... It looks like Jupiter. There's a bunch of rings around this planet. And it's going to crash into the rings, you know, and it, the computer says, fucking 20 minutes. And they're all like, fuck. <laughs> This, this is what I'm telling you. There's a lot of disgusting stuff. Look at this nasty pussy looking vagina thing. Oh, that's like the most disgusting looking vagina I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but yeah, that's where the alien comes out of. And shit. There's a guy who gets burned with acid. It looks so cool. His hands and shit. From the blood of the fucking thing he tries to kill. That's fucking crazy. <clears throat> All these motherfuckers who were in that ship die because they fucked up is basically uh, what happens. But from then on, all that's left is the main girl, the android, and some Mexican guy. And they're just trying to fucking, you know, get out of the fucking place and shit. Uh, they end up finding, uh, I think the Mexican guy died. The Mexican guy dies. I don't remember how. I, don't, I really don't because it was a long movie and I'm high and drunk right now. Um, I think the aliens, no, the aliens stick him. One of the aliens stick, sticks him and takes him up. And, and then they all come and they all on his face. They all just stab him on his face. It's fucked up. I just remembered. Um, but she's left with the fucking android. And they turn off the gravity. This is a badass part. They turn off the gravity and she starts shooting the aliens when they don't have any gravity. And so all the blood of the acid is floating around. And they're trying to get by while fucking around the acid that's just floating around everywhere. Knowing that as soon as the gravity turns back on, the acid's going to fall. And then all hell's going to break loose because holes are going to open in the ship. So it's just a... 
It's a lot of anxiety in this movie. It's fucking badass. I really, really enjoyed. A lot of these scenes are really, really good. I can't wait to see them on digital. Um, they get eventually to the ship, and uh, there's only three of them left at the end. The android, the main chick, and actually the Isabella Merced, they find her in a cocoon, and they pull her out, and I knew right away. You idiots. I'm like, if she's in the cocoon, they already laid a xenomorph in her. That's why she's in the cocoon. They're just putting her there so that the thing can burst out and be born. <sighs> but they save her and they take her to the ship because she's pregnant. They, she had said in the beginning of the movie she's pregnant and shit. So they take her to the fucking ship. And uh, this chick puts her in the pod and she's going to be okay. And before she's about to put herself in. The other pod starts beeping and she's like, what the fuck? And so she opens it up and this chick starts giving birth. Now, if you know the alien lore, these things grow fast and reproduce fast. So as soon as they fucking impregnate you, that shit doesn't take nine months. It takes a few fucking minutes before that shit is grown and pops out of your chest uh, and shit. Maybe like half an hour or something. Uh, and then after it's out of you, it grows fucking fast right away. But this chick starts screaming, and she this is a crazy part. She gives birth out of her pussy. An egg. A disgusting fucking egg. Oh, my God. This is why the pussies online didn't like this movie. Because they're not used to seeing this fucking disgusting girl stuff. This H.R. Geiger shit. Oh my god. So she gives birth to this fucking egg and shit. And she yells at the other girl, get it away from me. And the girl grabs it and runs away with it to like dispose of it. But it starts oozing acid so she drops it. And then out of it, it starts opening like a cocoon. And you see like a little baby. And because it's covered in acid, it falls through the... Through the fucking floor. And it lands in the hall and, and the, the bottom and shit. And so then this girl goes looking for it. But you know because it's dark down there. The thing grows and gets away. And you don't see it. But eventually she goes back upstairs. Um, You might not be able to see it totally. I don't know. I'll show you. But like I said. uh, This thing. I'm about to show you this thing. It is the stuff of nightmares. And the first, because it's a baby. Remember, it came out of her. It's a baby. But it was a xenomorph alien. This thing literally looks like a combination of a xenomorph body, but white. Mixed with a human, skinny, like a xenomorph human. And the face looks like the engineers from Prometheus. It has a penis, a small little penis, and a tail. It's disgusting. Uh, here you go. I'm gonna show you guys, motherfuckers. Um, but when they, when she first sees it, the thing goes to Isabella Merced, the mother, and he starts fucking. I guess he's sucking on her tits. I don't know if he kills her or what, because they don't really show some. But it just looks like he's fucking breastfeeding off of her. It's the most disgusting looking thing. That, that's the back of it right there. Oh, and it's so, it, it looks like the Slender Man. But it's the fucking... Oh my god, it's the stuff of nightmares. I'm gonna have nightmares fucking tonight after watching this ass. Oh my god, it's like sucking on her tits and breastfeeding off of her poor little girl, bro. <laughs> that's disgusting. So, yeah... Uh, that girl dies, obviously. That thing kills her. So then now it's just this girl and the android. The android's offline. I think she turned him offline because she thought they were going to go autopilot already. So she turned him offline to save his power. So he's offline. But she ends up fucking going down to the hall and putting on a spacesuit. And she remembers what the other android said that the only way they got rid of it was opening the hall. And so it got sucked into space. So that's basically the idea she gets. And uh, look at it. You can see his little penis right there, dude. It's got a little pen look, a little stick right there. It's disgusting, bro. This thing is disgusting and scary as fuck, bro. Um, 
So yeah, she opens the hall and the big hole opens and this damn thing falls out into space and that's how she's able to fucking kill it. An ass. Um, there's a cool shot where you just see her hanging outside of the ship and 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 the rings those are the ring the rings uh i guess it's i don't know if it's saturn it might be a planet with just rings but that's the thing crashing into the rings and it looks fucking crazy and in the background the thing that's on fire that's the space station that crashed into the rings already so they're on a little ship um so she goes and you know puts the and you know she gets back in the ship and she puts the alien on cryogenesis and she puts herself on cryogenesis and she records a message and that's it but she is carrying the vials of the goop and that's how it ends there's no end of credit scenes or after credits or none of that bullshit uh but this is in the timeline from what the story told this takes place right after the first one so this might just be another side story. They could do, you know, sequels, but it'll be a side story that's taking place between them. And they could, if they're smart, tie it into one of them or maybe Ripley runs into one of them. There's a one where Ripley goes to Earth, doesn't she, with a little girl after resurrection, was it? I don't even remember. Ripley lands on Earth with a little girl. Um, I just feel like... They could cross paths and Sigourney Weaver could be de-aged. It wouldn't look good. It would look just as shitty as they did for, for Ian Holm. Um, God rest his soul. I don't know if people got paid. I mean, they just use anybody's likeness nowadays without people's permission. What the fuck? But that guy was in it. Um, I really like this movie and I cannot wait to see this on digital. That's just me being honest for you motherfuckers. Uh, I recommend it. I hope you all see this. Um, it's very Geigerish, very disgusting, very disgusting. Uh, there's not wokeness. There's not a lot of that ass. There isn't. There's no agendas. None, uh, none of that shit. This is a straight up alien, disgusting movie. Uh, scary. I think it gave me anxiety in some certain spots. And that's what this type of movie's supposed to do. Uh, that's when you know it's good. Fuck all those haters on the internet, those pussies. They're not used to seeing vaginas and dicks. Pussies. That's why it kind of shit scares them. Anyways. About the only Warner Brothers news, because fuck James Gunn, the motherfucking pussies bissing editing or something, uh, that I'm going to give today is that James Wan, the crazy guy who does the fucking The Nun and the, the, the Insidious... And he did the shitty Aquaman movies. Well, I'm not going to diss him because the story was shitty and basic. But the special effects and a lot of the designs were beautiful. Amber Turd is a bitch. Uh, but she's hot. I would fuck her. But that's about it. I would never date her. Um, anyway, well, I would not get her pregnant at all. Uh, he is now going to direct the... Creature of the Black Lagoon reboot or remake or whatever for Warner. WB. Universal Studios Monsters. I think this guy's good for this kind of ass. Um, I don't, I've never watched The Insidious or The Nun or any of that shit. People tell me it's scary. I've seen some clips online. They look, look kind of creepy. I like his style. I'll say it like that. I think... That kind of style that he's presented in the past movies will be really good with the creature from the Black Lagoon, which is a very, very underrated monster, uh, Hollywood monster, if you ask me. I don't know why they had nobody's ever jumped on this ass before. This is a very underrated monster that, to me, growing up as a kid, was one of my favorite ones. I thought he was badass. I honestly did. I was like, this guy's cool and shit. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, man. And I, and I can't wait to see a trailer. I wonder if he's going to keep it in the same style, like the way Nosferatu, where they keep the gothic looking and shit. Or is he going to do a modern take where there's going to be like modern woke bitches with, with like purple hair and glasses and shit. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm very interested and I am intrigued. And at the very least, I am a little bit hopeful for this. 
So I'll say this. I'm going to light up to you, Mr. James Wan. Mr. James Wan. This to you, motherfucker. Uh, but moving on to the main ass. And boy, is this ass. But we saw it this week. Sony released their Craven the Hunter trailer, Red Band, with CGI blood and bullshit. And at the end, we got the Rhino, everybody! Finally! Uh, Spider-Man villain done semi-right. The fuck is this I'm looking at, bro? <sighs> I mean, he looked cool at the first, you know, the way he was built. Right there, he looks cool. Right there, it looks fucking cool. And then uh, you see this, and you're all like, what is this? <sighs> I'll give them a little bit of leeway. I don't think Kevin Feige and the MCU could ever even do the Rhino good at all. How could you? I think Kevin Feige and the MCU would probably go more of the robotic suit. Not the shitty one that Sony did in the Spider-Man movie. But I think even Kevin Feige would try to do a robotic suit. I would not have gone the road of the mutant. <sighs> I would even think even doing a suit would be dumb as fuck. The Rhino is hard for a live action. I'll give him that. Look, my biggest issue with this fucking piece of shit movie that's going to come out in November, December, whenever the ass is being released, is that this is Craven the Hunter. Who is supposed to ha be hunting animals. And who gets his fucking powers from some kind of serum or experimental shit they use on him. Before he dies. This is now Craven the conservationist who protects animals. And who is in line with the animal spirits. And can talk to them. And communicate with animals. And he got his power because a lion almost killed him and the lion's blood uh, fell into his wounds. So he got cat lion aids. And yes, Gomer, you're right. Another Spider-Man villain without Spider-Man in it. <sighs> I mean, how many movies have we seen that Sony has just completely ruined Spider-Man villains? And I'm not just talking about the, the past Andrew Garfield movies. Uh, because they all sucked. Uh, I think, you know what, I'll even say the lizard was good. I didn't like the Spider-Man suit in that first movie. And I didn't like Emos the way he was doing Spider-Man. I liked him when he was joking around being Spider-Man. When he was being Peter Parker, I didn't like it. Um, the Lizard was good, but all those other villains in those other, that second movie sucked ass. Venom has been trashed since the first movie. And if you read comic books, like I do, you collect them, and you, especially Venom, which I have a lot of Venom comic books, the, the, it's been ass from the beginning. Morbius was trash. The fact that they brought Carnage in and ruined it pissed me off. Visually looked good. The stuff he did looked good. But everything about the story and origin and everything sucked ass. And then there was that failure of Madam Webb. Even though they have a bunch of hotties. A lot, a lot of hotties. And sexy one minute scene with them on the suits. <sighs> But the story didn't make any sense. No mention of Spider-Man. Uncle Ben and Mary, Mary, fucking Mary Parker. Some, some bullshit. Bullshit. <sighs> I 
They've ruined so much already. And what's worse is that in this next movie, we're not only having Craven, we're not only having the Rhino, but this next movie is also going to have the Chameleon and Calypso in this. Four more Spider-Man characters that they are going to ruin. The worst part about all of this is because of all these legalities and fucking bullshit with the studios. Anything that Sony characters, not, not Spider-Man, side characters, that Sony has used in their fucking live action movies that they are not allowing Kevin Feige and Marvel to use in the MCU. They have to use characters that Sony has not used yet. Look at these characters that are badass Spider-Man villains. Craven, Rhino, the Chameleon. Fucking shit. Venom. The best one! Carnage! Morbius! All the spider women! And you're trying to tell me that Marvel and Disney are never going to be able to use these characters for Tom Holland to, to interact or battle with. Because you fucking ruined them. At this point, the only thing that's going to be left for fucking... Tom Holland to face in the MCU are going to be all these fucking gay, non-binary, lesbian fucking new characters they've made in the past 10 years like the fucking white rabbit over here and her gang of fucking dumbasses. I have always collected Spider-Man comic books. I have so many arcs. And, and, and so many, you know, from different you know, writers and artists. When it got to this point, I stopped buying them. And there was a point where it got interesting. I'm not going to lie because Dr. Octopus uh, put his consciousness inside of Peter Parker and so Peter Parker died <laughs> and Dr. Octopus was the new Peter Parker and uh, and he because he was really smart smarter than Peter he became like the Tony Stark and had a company Parker Industries and all this ass and he called himself the superior Spider-Man and he had he was Spider-Man but had Dr. Octopus arm. it was badass I have that shit but it got to the point where when they brought Peter Parker back, Dr. Octopus eventually died because Peter's memories and everything was still inside of his brain. And eventually that came back and deleted and kind of like, you're not really here and boom. And Dr. Octopus died inside of Peter. Eventually there was another clone and he came back and this is a bunch of shit Marvel does. No one ever dies. Dr. Octopus goes back. And he still calls himself a superior Spider-Man. Fucking stupid. Anyways. When it got to this point where Spider-Man is fighting the White Rabbit and stupid ass characters like this, I stopped buying them. I no longer, I'm not lying, I no longer fucking buy comic books. I might read them online. I don't buy them anymore. Because an ass like this. <sighs> fuck you, Sony. And fuck you, Marvel Disney. For these fucking dumbass writers and, draw and fucking people you hired that come up with stupid shit. This looks like... This looks, oh. You know, I was mad when Batman would fight the Mad Hatter. I would get mad. Because I thought that was stupid as fuck. But this is just stupid. There's some other Flash villains that I hate. They're fucking dumb as fuck. They're also like this, like card people. They're fucking, those are the stupidest, uncreative fucking idiots. 
Fucking motherfuckers don't even know if they're male or female. That's what they hire nowadays. Idiots. We're moving on. You motherfuckers. Fuck you, Craven 100, and fuck you, Sony, for giving us ass. Speaking of ass, I'm talking about homosexual ass. None other than Bo de Mayo, that motherfucker who did the X Men 97 but got fired two weeks before the premiere of the goddamn show, even though he did all the work, supposedly, or was in charge. Motherfucker works out. We already heard the rumors that he got fired because Disney Marvel found out he had a gay OnlyFans. He never showed his penis or his asshole, but he would wear thongs and show off his muscles and be all lathered up in gay positions. And uh, according to the rumors, that's why he was fired. Right before the show premiered. Now, our, our reviews... For X-Men 97 was a mixed reaction. You all know this. I like some of the episodes. I disliked a bunch of other ones. Well. Turns out. That this guy is now lashing out. Against Marvel and Disney. And he said. Here's the truth people. This week on the internet. Came out on Twitter. This is why they fired me. They fired me. Because I posted this on my Instagram. A picture of me as dressed up, as animated, as a gay cyclops. He puts on his Instagram. Firstly, I'm so grateful to have worked on X-Men 97. Collaborating with some amazing, talented folks. Creating this revival was a dream come true. And the support the fans have shown is so touching. However, I felt it. Pressing for me to speak up in the wake of leaving the show. So he calls on and tells them that they're racist and bigots and fucking uh, homophobes. And that they got mad because he posted a Cyclops on the fucking, you know, Instagram being gay. And it was him. And shit. Well, Mickey Mouse doesn't like it. When somebody talks shit about him. And so now Marvel Disney has lashed out on the internet. And have cleared out a statement saying. That's not true. The reason you were fired. You homosexual. Was because you were actually sending pictures. Of you as a gay cyclops. But live action. Not drawings. You were sending sexual pictures of you as gay X-Men, gay Wolverine, in a little yellow thong, nothing else on, with claws, gay Gambit with just a trench coat, no thong, just fucking flashing people, gay Beast, just fucking all blue, naked, and shit. He was sending that to the staff and was saying, use this as inspiration for the show. That's what Disney is saying. I'm not playing. Look it up. Disney said this guy was sending lewd superhero him this pictures of himself in lewd positions and lewd wearing shit as fucking X-Men. And saying this is just inspiration. Not only that, but there has been several of their young male interns who have said this guy... Literally has gone up and fingered our ass, grabbed our balls and dicks and saying, Hey, uh, good morning. How are you doing? Good job. Keep it up. Disney loves you. And Disney said, you know what? You're fired. Disney said, that's why we fired you, motherfucker. Not because of some little fucking Cyclops cartoon you posted on Instagram. Because you were being a pervert to the employees on this company. And we don't stand for that. We like gays, lesbians, and non-binaries. But we don't want sexual molestation to be out there. Whew. That was a lot to say. But it had to be said. Because it's true, apparently. I don't know. Do you guys believe this guy? 
Or do you believe Disney? I don't know. A little tricky. You know, I will say one thing about a lot of these motherfuckers nowadays. Okay? Because being gays and lesbians and mentally deficient, where you don't know that if you have a penis, you're a man. You don't know if you have a vagina, you're a female. All that stuff's not new. All that's been around since the days of cavemen. Alright? Humans are born differently. It's been around. It's nothing new. What is new is that these motherfuckers nowadays think they can go work in a big company and continue acting like debaucherous, fucking, horny-ass fucking sex fiends. You know, there's a thing called the privacy of your own home. Or there's a thing called the gay club downtown. Or there's a thing called that black building downtown that doesn't have any fucking uh, any any fucking uh, windows. It only has one door. It doesn't have any fucking signs. But there's always cars parking, men going in and coming out. So they're called bath houses. All right? They're near the banks usually, right across the streets. I've seen them. Those places exist. And that's where you fucking could go and do all this shit. But if you start bringing it to the workplace, it becomes a problem. You dumbass. I am with Disney on this. I'm glad they fired your fucking pervert ass. You take that shit to the club, to your house, or to the bathhouse and shit. Don't bring it to work. Some of us actually come to work because we want to work and earn a paycheck. We want the finger in the ass after work. All right, just a time and a place. You dumbass. Cheers to Disney on this one. Is all I'm going to say. I'm glad this debauchery motherfucker is fired. <sighs> but since we are talking about X-Men 97 and this motherfucker, we all know how X-Men 97 ended. The X-Men were sent to different timelines. Half of them were sent to the future and the other half were sent to the past in Egypt where they ran into apocalypse and in the background we saw a city in a dome which pretty much confirms that Kang the Conqueror was the next villain where uh, there was there going to be another side story with apocalypse but obviously Kang is the one who owns this Futuristic city in the past. Apocalypse is still a slave. The first mutant. Unfortunately. For all of us comic book fans. Who enjoy comic book stuff. And cartoons. And ass. Because one man. Decided to beat. A white woman. Marvel is now forced to drop this storyline. The way X-Men 97 ended, we're not even going to get a... Con what? This is literally the end of Shang-Chi. This is literally the end of the Eternals. This is literally the end of what other movie did they not follow up on? Every fucking movie. Doctor Strange. There's so many movies that it ended up cliffhangers and they never followed up on. This is literally that. All because one pretentious thinks he's better and smarter than the rest of us because he went to some fucking really rich school and college and he speaks all proper and shit. He don't speak like the rest of us in the hood motherfucker because he decided to beat a little white girl the rest of us get ass for entertainment fuck you jonathan majors you dumbass you ruined the mcu and you ruined the rest of this for us the, the, apparently now the cartoons you idiot i hope you never get another job in hollywood 
Not because I fucking hate you, but because you ruined shit for me. You dumbass. I was actually excited for Kang in the MCU. You idiot. The biggest cliffhanger ever. A thousands of Kangs in an arena. And Kevin Feige's just gonna pretend like he never showed it to us. Fuck you, Jonathan Majors. Fuck you. We're moving on! Since we're talking about ass... The Eternals Part 2 is never happening. We all know this. Even though it had some of the most expensive fucking cast they ever hired. It's never happening. But apparently now it's being shifted. into some sort of like anime Disney Plus sequel series cartoon. I doubt they're going to pay Salma Hayek. And this fucking guy Madden and, and fucking uh, this fucking Chang and all these motherfuckers, Kumel Namjiani and, 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 and uh, Angelina Jolie. They're not going to pay them to come voice the characters. They're going to pay some fucking dumbass voice actors to come here and show us these characters and continue the story. This is ass and bullshit. I don't even know why they even bothered making the Eternals if they weren't even going to try to make a good movie. Did you any of you see it? I saw it. It was nothing special at all. Nothing that said, wow, Marvel. Awesome. I'm in a fantasy world. It was generic ass. It was literally the first generic ass Marvel had, uh, to me, has ever done. And from there, it did go downhill. I honestly think from that point on. Ah. Uh, Well, I'm done with this ass. Here we go with some spoilers for you motherfuckers. Because at the D23, we did show the tra they did show trailers for the fucking uh, Thunderbolts. But I can't show you any of it. Because we'll get banned. So I'll show you some pictures. Fuck it. Some stills. Here is our first official, no, unofficial, leaked image. Of Ghost from the trailer in D23. And she disappears and appears. But whoa! I, in the trailer, the guy who shot the video, you can hear the reaction of the audience. And it's not like, you know, when you see a character for the first time, even if it's somebody you haven't seen in a while, the reaction usually when you see a trailer, you're like, oh! <gasps> Oh, wow. The reaction was like, uh, and I even, you can even hear somebody say, what is that? Who's that? I didn't know that was ghost. I did not If I hadn't seen her use her powers, I wouldn't have figured it out. She uses her powers and you can, and I was like, oh, okay. Is that ghost? I guess that's ghost. I said, that's ghost. I don't know if you guys remember what she looked like in the past. In the back movie. But this is what ghosts looked like before. The one in the very left. Um, and the one in the very left, I'm showing you two other designs. One from the comic book and one from the video games. The more modern uh, video games. The one from the comic books is scary as fuck. And frankly, I don't ever want to see a woman in a costume or in a crouch, hunched position as that fucking thing that they have in the comic books. It's disgusting. I don't like it. It looks nasty. It, look, it reminds me of the alien, that alien Romulus shit I showed you at the end. That's what that shit looks like. Now, the one from the video games looks like, to me, some kind of bug or insect. And that's what it looked like in the MCU. I said, oh, that's what they're trying to go for, the modern video game look. This is way different, bros. This is nowhere close to any of that. You know what this reminds me of? I don't know if you fucking play Fortnite. Uh, I still play it from time to time. I used to be really into it. I have... I spent hundreds of dollars. I have tons of skins. 
mostly Marvel and DC skins and anything that was movies, I would buy. Shit like that. I don't give a fuck about their own creations. I'm more about the fucking shit they sell. But anyways, this reminds me of a skin they made. This is their own original skin. It was called Scratch. Uh, that's what it reminds me of. This is really basic and, and like not even trying to come up with something cool. I think for the rest of the movie, she takes the helmet off. Because the rest of the trailer, the girl was without the without the fucking helmet. So, this is probably only for a little bit. But it's just basic. I don't like it. I don't like this design. Uh, we get to get the first look at Task Mask. Everybody else looks the same. That's why I'm not going to show you everyone else. I'm not going to show you Bucky. He looks the same. I'm going to show you Yelena. Uh, Black Widow's sister. Uh, Florence Pugh. Big ass. No tits. Nice fucking big ass, little ass. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, man, I'm just thinking about that ass right now. Anyways, I'm not going to show you that. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to show you a U.S. agent. because They all look the same. They look exactly the same. Nothing special about any of them. These were the ones that were different and I have a problem with. Taskmaster. When I saw this in the trailer, I didn't know who this was. I thought this was like a new character or just one of these generic things. Um, but this is Taskmaster. And you even remember what Taskmaster looked like in the Black Widow movie. That's the one on the left. The one in the middle is how it looks in the comic books. I was always pissed off that the face... <sighs> It's really the... Okay, I'm talking about the Black Widow one. It's really the goggles. The, the eyes that piss me off. Because it looks like he's wearing sunglasses. She. Because it's a girl. In this version. The MCU, it's a girl. Everything in the MCU really is the MCU. Like they say. They're right. I don't like to agree with them. But they're right. It is the MCU. Whether we like it or not. It's a girl. Taskmaster's a girl. Even though the character of the guy was in the movie, but they didn't make him Taskmaster. They made the girl fucking Taskmaster. Fucking stupid as fuck. It looks like he's wearing glasses. It looks a little bit like a skull, but not really. This new one looks nothing like a skull. And frankly, I think they're using a combination of some of the new designs. These are the new designs, but even the new designs look more like a skull than this does. This looks like an alien. With, ho with holes on his cheeks or something. You know what this is? It's, this is them. Marvel Disney. Still bending a knee to China. Yeah. Because originally. The reason why. That Kevin Feige did not make Taskmaster look. Like Taskmaster. Was because the Chinese. Don't like skulls. In the media. They don't show skulls in TV shows or movies. If there's ever a skull, they edit it out. They don't like skulls to represent death. Because, you know, when they throw you in a camp, that's what happens to you. So they don't want to remind people of their fate when they misbehave in that country. So they don't like showing skulls over there. And so the only way they could get the fucking movie to be shown in China was to them to get a design that was approved and they said, okay, that doesn't look a lot like a skull. Well, you can show it. And that's what, and that's not the, that's the truth. And that's what happened with Taskmaster in the original Black, Black Widow movie. Look it up. It's true. Uh, they bend the knee to China and they didn't do skulls because of that. Because they wanted the movie in China. It didn't make any money. Scarlett Yost sued the shit out of Marvel for releasing it on digital. And she didn't make any money. Uh, she was mad, but this is uh, this is them fucking bending a knee to communism, and I, I I fucking think this is ass. I don't like these none of these. I don't like I don't like the way fucking Taskmaster looks. I don't like the way fucking Ghost looks. I'm not lying. Uh, one thing we did see in the trailer, this is the last thing I'm going to show you, but they did get a look at the Sentry in this movie. 
or as he was mentioned in the trailer, Bob. Basically, the trailer just shows you Lena. I should tell you the trailer. Shows you Len. I'm not going to show you the trailer. Sorry. I'm not because I don't get banned. Basically, shows you Lena going to talk to her fake dad. She still calls him dad. The Red Guardian. Uh, David Harbour. He's in this. He looks exactly the same, which is why I'm not showing you. And uh, she's just trying to tell him, like, I just I don't feel fulfilled and shit. Some shit like that. But then she's on a mission, and when she's just on the mission, she gets attacked by Ghost, and also by Taskmaster, and by U.S. Agent. They're all fighting. And then the doors all seal all around them, and they're all like, Yelena tells them, we were set up, like, they brought us here to, to, to kill us, because what the fuck, we're all, we're all doing the same mission. And then this guy pops out from under a desk, don't shoot, and they're all like, who the fuck are you? And he goes, I'm Bob. So he's Bob in this movie. That's about all they show of him. They show, they keep showing clips in the other movie fighting and ass like that. Uh, but there's one short clip where he's standing and a bunch of sh soldiers shoot at him. Pa, 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 pa. And that's why and nothing happens to him. You see all these little holes just like that. So you know he is a sentry and he's probably going to transform, but we don't see him transform. We do see the emblem or the logo lying there and someone picks it up. Probably him or someone picks it up. But even the emblem, the logo doesn't even look like the shit on his... F it's not even an S. What is that? A T? It's fucking stupid. <sighs> This guy's not big enough to be the sentry. He's not blonde enough. I'm sure that's all going to be CGI. I don't know if he's going to grow up. I doubt it. He's probably going to be the same size. I bet you. You know, they had that guy, Steven Yen. The guy from, uh... What was it? The, the, the fucking the zombie show. The living, walking dead and shit. That guy was fucking going to be the sentry. But uh, I bet you, as soon as he saw the sentry, the con he, he googled the sentry. He's like, they want me to be this white Aryan motherfucker? Fuck this. Everyone's going to laugh at me and they're going to trash this movie. And he quit. And so then, right away, they replaced him with this white guy. But, I mean, they're idiots. The obvious choice, the obvious choice to, to play the sentry. The sentry is literally... The equivalent, he isn't, but power-wise, he is the equivalent of Superman in the fucking MCU. He's probably the strongest one ever, out of all the heroes and villains. Um, Henry Cavill doesn't have a fucking job. Henry Cavill is built like a fucking mule. He's huge. We saw him as Wolverine. He was huge. He was bigger than fucking Hugh Jackman. Those fucking arms are big. Henry Cavill was the perfect fucking cast for this. They're idiots over there. I don't know what they're doing. I like the Sentry. I think he's a very interesting character. He's not sane. He's crazy. Split personality. Shit like that. Bipolar. Ass. Um, the rumor is he's the villain of the movie because they can't control him. That's, that's the point of the movie. Um, he's an experiment that someone made and Allegra, Valentina, Madame Hydra, Elaine from Seinfeld, that chick, uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus or whatever her name is. She fucking sends the Thunderbolts to bring him back, like, some country or somebody made this experiment and she wants it for America. So she sends them to go get him. Um, yeah, and this guy's the bad guy because they can't control him. And once he transforms into the sentry, all hell breaks loose. And I got a feeling Bucky's going to die. Uh, some of these guys are going to die. I think Bucky's going to die. Ghost is going to die. Probably fucking uh, Taskmaster's going to die. All the insignificance. 
All of them are they're, they're all gonna die. I bet you. I bet you. This is the Suicide Squad. People have to die. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be the shitty characters no one likes. Ah. Uh, anyways, I mean, there's. I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm just gonna fucking smoke and say fuck you, Marvel and Disney and all these assholes and shit. But I'm done with the goddamn... You know, I'm just done ranting, you sons of bitches. So let me give you some life advice to take home for the evening, and you better fucking listen. Don't ever give up. Ever. And whatever it is you're doing, your job, your life, it's hard on all of us. No matter what you do, if you're rich or privileged and shit, you're still going to have problems. But pussy ass problems, not compared to the rest of us, but there's still problems and you probably are just such a pussy and privileged that you can't fucking handle. Oh, uh, fucking, I don't have fucking ham this morning and, and I don't know how to drive to go to the store. And you cry all day because you're hungry. You don't know how to make food, you dumbass. Um, yeah, it, there's still problems. But you shouldn't give up on anything. Your job, your life, your dreams. No matter what anyone says or calls you. And believe me, I've been called a lot of things growing up. A lot. But we gotta keep, keep going. I mean, four years into this ass, we still only have 600 subscribers. 600 subscribers. But only at an average, 20 of you watch the actual broadcast show. Only 5 of you at an average watches live. And all the other short videos, only like 4 people watch during the week. I could have quit a long time ago. In fact, a pussy quit on us a few months ago. Y'all know who I'm talking about. So, don't be a pussy. Be the son of man. And keep going. Whatever it is you're doing. Because at the end of the day, you're doing this for yourself. Not for anyone else. So fuck all you quitters and pussies who give up. And for the rest of you who are thinking about giving up, I'm telling you not to. And keep going. Cares. And I'll see you next week. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh?